the willing ear to our prayers. We ask that you give hands, attentive eyes, prudence, and perfect control. Keep safe each driver. Help them to do their very best. Bless the race cars and those who maintain them, for they are examples of teamwork. Bless we the fans, that we may compete, O oh God, and be inspired as a human race. God, we know that in every race, someone has to set the pace. So we pray today that your amazing grace will set the way. Here to perform our national anthem, please welcome country music singer, songwriter, whose EP featuring the hit single, Two Hands, out July 9th, California's own, Callie Twistleman. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous thighs O'er the ramparts we watched Were so gallantly streaming And the rockets regular The bombs bursting in air
The Fox Bet Super 6 app giving you a chance to win $10,000 of Quint Boyer's money. All you have to do, download the app, answer six questions for your shot to win. It's free to play. We don't want you to miss out, so play now while there's time. Good luck. Hope you cash in. Hottest driver in NASCAR is Kyle Larson, who hopes to win for the second straight week. He's on the pole, but how about this, that no winner from the first starting position in the last 15 Sonoma races has come from the pole. The last driver to win from the pole, Jeff Gordon. That was in 2004. He'll be in the booth with Clint Boyer and Mike Joy calling the race for you. But before they do and before the command, let's get to know Sonoma a little better. The Valley of the Moon, where life moves slower and moments like fine wine are savored. But in this place, the outside doesn't always match the inside. The people here are resilient living through drought, fire, and now a pandemic. A face of calm, the heart of survival, and ready to return. A reflection of its people, this track, serene from the stands, but on the course, a complicated maze where every turn asks the driver to prove his worth. This is not an easy place. Here, the journey is always worth the prize. This is Sonoma. You know, it's a good race, good track to come to, and Michael Jordan, Guy Fieri, Kyle Shanahan are, are all here. Drivers, they have a job to do, focused for this, the 16th race of the season, and again, after this, just 10 races until we get to, and there's, there he is ready to cook up a meal and drive the pace car. Last five Sonoma races won by drivers who have won championships. Right now, let's get ready to hear those words. And now for the most famous words in motorsports. Please welcome San Francisco 49ers head coach, Kyle Shanahan. Hello, faithful. Hey, we've missed you guys, man. So pumped to see you guys in Levi's again this year. Hey, on that note, let's get this started. Drivers! Start your engines! Coaches always know how to work it with the crowd and the guys they'll be watching. We'll all be watching. Thanks for being with us from Sonoma, California. NASCAR on FS1.
the vineyards of Sonoma, a finely aged product develops its texture. The timeline between tannins and vinegar is a delicate balance. Meanwhile, other vintages are being claimed off the rack. Timing is key. Settle for consistency, and quality may fall short. We'll keep digging. Become too greedy, and the wine can sour. On the winding road, nestled in wine country, timing is the game plan, but the outcome is unpredictable. Welcome to Sonoma Raceway. Welcome to Sonoma and the Toyota Save Mart 350 on FS1. Beautiful wine country and a beautiful road course for NASCAR's best to contest today. From start finish, it's a quick left. You carry speed all the way to the top of the hill in turn two. It's a blind exit to turn two, down into three. Turn in at the depression and the next corner is another blind exit. A hairpin at the left side of your screen leads you to the S's, all the way down to that fast turn 10 and into the hairpin turn 11 and back to the start finish line. It is one of the most technical and one of the most challenging road courses anywhere in the country. Why am I telling you this? Let's hear from Sonoma's all-time NASCAR winner, Jeff Gordon and Clint Boyer, who's also had You're great success You're telling us because you yeah. have more laps than we do today. Well, that, this whole weekend, he's been out there uh, run, running <laughs> the uh, uh, um, Trans Am cars. Trans Am yeah. cars, the Mustang. Hey, I'm going to tell you, it's going to start right when they get the green flag. This front row, Kyle Larson, Chase Elliott, they've got to navigate the grip level and the braking zone in turn one and turn two. So that's where trouble is first going to start on this racetrack. But it happens often also. But I'm going to focus on where you make speed and where you make passes. Turn seven, big heavy braking zone. you got to get down into there as deep as you can. Get on the brakes. But those tires are going to be slipping and sliding. And those downshifts are going to be happening. And the wheel hop also. Then you're going to come down through the S's, very narrow, very fast section of the racetrack, and then the next great passing zone, that's into turn 11. Another big, heavy braking zone, but boy, that car is going to be jumping and sliding all over the place again, but this is a great place to make passes, but also a great place to get in a lot of trouble, Clint. Oh, absolutely. All weekend long, Jeff and I have been talking and learning about tannins and, and bricks and, and <laughs> legs and headaches, and now the headache lies in. You said braking zones, that's a trouble zone? No, 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 no. Long Long before you get to that braking zone, you got to get yourself to that corner. Get off of six. Get up through. These tires are softer. They're going to wear out. Long runs are important. Off of six, off of ten, leading to those trouble zones that you're talking about. That's where the juice is. <laughs> You know this is going to be fun, and I know you oh, yes. wish you were out there. Oh, I love this racetrack. <laughs> All right, well, let's get the word from a couple of the champions that will compete in this race. Time for a little two-way radio. Yeah, I want to talk to the guys. One of the last couple of them. Hey, Mark Truex Jr., this is Jeff up in the booth. You got us? Yeah, I got you, Jeff. I know we got to be quick here. You're going to get on pit road. But, man, you won the last two. You're starting deep. How are you going to get to the front, win this thing again? Uh, just going to have to be smart here at the start and, uh, you know, pick them off one at a time and hopefully get on a race strategy. I think that'll be key. It's about to go through the blind spot. Spotter's talking to him about the one place there on the track there where they don't have great visibility. All right, man. Well, hey, thanks for talking to us. It's going to be a lot of fun to watch. Have a good one. Take care. A lot of places where you can pass, a few where you dare pass, and uh, some that are just downright difficult and intimidating as the drivers check pit road speed, and we'll allow them to complete that uh, before we get back on the radio here. Big wide pit road. The boxes aren't that wide, but the driving surface on pit road is pretty wide. Well, yeah, you can really attack the entry of this pit road because of where pit road speed starts, but you're actually in that narrow lane before you ever get to that section. But then, boy, so important. You see that yellow line? That's where that pit road starts. So you're going to, the speed starts. So you're going to come all the way around that narrow uh, alley before you have to jump on those you brakes. You actually roll around there very fast. Always drags you into going too fast. Let's see if we can dial up the old pole sitter here, Kyle Larson. Hey, Kyle Larson, it's Boyer Gordon. Mike Joy in the booth, you got us? Yeah, I got you. Pole cat, baby, big weekend last weekend, winning all the stages and syncing up the show. Up front again with your teammate on the other side of you. How are you going to get through this first corner, first corner at the top of the hill? Uh, I don't know. Um, we'll see, but I think we should have a good day. We should have a really good car. 
Um, you know, Chase has done a great job on all the road courses, so I know my car will be fast, but I'm also a little bit nervous because he'll be fast behind me. So hopefully we can hold him off for a little while and if not, you know, learn as much as we can on him. But um, it should be a fun day. Love being at home. All right, buddy. Well, have a good race. We'll be watching. All right. Don't have too much fun up there. <laughs> <laughs> I think the key word was behind me. <laughs> All right. Here's your Toyota starting grid for today's race. Kyle Larson on the pole starts first for his fourth straight Sonoma race. And Chase Elliott, six road car swims, but not yet here. Row two, William Byron, 12 top tens in the last 13 races. And Denny Hamlin, That remember that great dogfight that he and Tony Stewart had here in 2016 to the finish. And let's go to row three, two-time Sonoma winner Kyle Busch starting fifth and alongside him with his best Sonoma start, Austin Dillon. A row four right here, Alex Bowman, top tens in four of the last five road races, becoming a good road racer himself. And number four, Kevin Harvick, 2017 Sonoma winner, still looking for his first of the season. Brad Keselowski, a three-time road course runner-up, looking for his first win, turning right and left. And Tyler Reddick, who has never raced at Sonoma. You'll find the rest of our field along the uh, bottom line ticker as we check in with our crew chief and a former Sonoma winner, Larry McReynolds. So, Mike, we've been coming here since 1989. We didn't race here last year, but this will be the first time we've unloaded them on Sunday morning and put them on the grid to race with no practice. Now, if you think it's a headache for the driver, it's a migraine for the crew chief. This is the hardest handling track to get your arms around left and right, up and down, loose off, tight end. It's about a compromise. You're never going to get it perfect, and Regan, maybe only three trips to pit road. Larry, it's going to be a very quick day on pit road. Kevin Harvick, past winner of this race, very good at this racetrack. The addition of the carousel section, though, threw this team for a curveball. They relied on last time we were here's notes to figure out what they needed to for this year. Jamie? Kyle Busch, a two-time winner here. His new crew chief, Ben Bayshore, told me this has been the biggest headache to this season so far. He said, we're going to use this first 10 laps to see what we have and go from there. Mike? Thanks, Jamie. The all-new Toyota TRD Camry leads the field and heads for Gilligan's Island, where it will stay until it's needed, hopefully not till the end of stage one. Here they come to the starting line, and the green flag waves. We're racing in Sonoma. Well, we were wondering how they go side by side, Jeff. Good jump by Kyle, got him out front. But I, right now, now it's, oh, look here. Left him a little bit of room right there. Now it's about making sure you had some temperature in those tires and moreover, temperature in those brakes. Well, I was pretty impressed right there with Larson being able to carry good speed up the hill and carry that momentum off that exit. And now into the carousel. It'll be a blind rise into your braking zone and then a long looping left hander downhill all the way after they cross this crest can get really loose in right here. Car wants to be light as you're going through this carousel. You can see that car sliding up. Yeah, that was Denny Hamlin, that preferred lane. You really want to hug that curb, keep it as tight as possible to get that launch down this back straightaway. Ooh, Denny Hamlin making an aggressive move. Not going to stick, though, as the 24 William Byron does the undercut. Well, that was turn seven that you spoke of. And I think this is probably one of the most important parts of this racetrack. Obviously, the fastest part of this racetrack is you're going down this back straightaway. The S is up through here. You crest this hill. The car wants to get light. That dirt you see already. You never, you kind of want to be that guy in the front, right? Maybe put a little dust in the racetrack for the guy behind you. <laughs> oh, you're because that guy. it sets you up. This turn 10 and you're coming off of here. Here comes the dive bomb. You see him looking to the inside. That's their passing opportunity. And the best one on this racetrack. From 125 miles an hour down to 35 for turn 11. Yeah, I always focused on turn 9 and 10, coming down that hill, carrying a lot of speed through that left-hander 9, right-hander 10, because that could protect me from somebody else passing or give me an opportunity to make that pass in 11. Already, you see the five of Larson really stretching it out. I'd be a little careful this early in the race. These tires, you know, the, I know we've got a competition caution coming, but you really want to take care of this, uh, those tires, and they can go away in a hurry at this race. You saw Martin Truex right there looking to the inside. Here's a guy that's plenty capable of getting the job done here. We've seen him win time and time again there. He's on the inside making another pass, starting 19th. If he's going to get up there and challenge these Hendrick cars, he's going to have to be aggressive, and that's what you see him doing. That's what I was going to say. That, you know, you, you always want to be smooth 
smooth and, 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 and patient at this racetrack, but not if you're Martin Truex Jr. and you know you can win this race, but you're starting that deep in the field. And the score is right with him, 16th and 17th there. Having that history behind you helps you a little bit. As you're getting up through the field, the guy looks in the mirror. He knows, man, that guy's won here a time or two. I'm just going to follow him. You can see Kyle. I see him tailing out a little bit. It's important to keep these tires underneath of you. You heard me say they're a little bit softer. Long runs are so important here at Sonoma. 11th place, Logano and Blaney coming down through the S's. And from here, it's full throttle through nine and off to 10. Yeah, and as I'm watching these guys, you got to give credit to these drivers. You have to remember, these guys haven't been here since 2019 and are already just posting crazy fast lap times. That's exactly what I was talking about, Chris Busher. He got through 9 and 10 and is going to be able to make this move on the 12 of Blaney because he carried all that speed off of 10 and got the, the inside line. Once you get that inside line, Mike, and in that braking zone, you're going to make that pass happen. Most of this track, at least this morning, had really good grip. The exception was turn 11. If you get a little bit outlined to the outside, I mean, you're dog paddling, you're swimming, you're looking for oars. Everything oh, but traction. Mike, you should have talked to us. You never asked our opinion where to be in 11. You got to be down on them tires right up against them in that paint. That's where the grip's at. <laughs> Of course, he'd have had to call and woke us up, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and good luck with that. <laughs> you heard Kyle Busch at the top of the show in the pre-race tell us what he's focused on. And, and usually when I think about Sonoma, I think about forward bite, the drive, keeping that throttle, you know, being easy on the throttle. He actually said something that, that caught my attention of front turn. He yeah. wants his car to turn. Well, you know, to me, front turn, as you see Kurt Busch making a move here, Christopher Bell. You heard him spin the tires up off the corner when he made that pass with Kurt Busch. You're riding with, you could hear that engine really rev up. That's what we're talking about on the forward drive. And you see him bringing Ryan Priest right along with him. But yeah, you know, you talk about that front turn. To me, to get good drive off, you got to have that car pointed straight, unwind the wheel. And the way you do that, have a good front turn. And Larson, he, he's making qualifying laps out there. He didn't get to qualify, so he's like, let me lay some down here early. If I was his crew chief, I would remind him, hey, we need to be good on lap 30, not two. Man, how about this Truex all the way up to 13th already? Six spots he's gained. And that was that the, the paint that I was talking about, right up against those tires. I mean, almost dragging the right side off of it on those tires. So much grip to be had there. Trouble for, uh, you said 20, Christopher yeah, Bell? Christopher Bell has an issue. We saw him going backwards there. Some kind of problem. He's on pit road. They going in a deck the hood, Inside the car, man. He was 23rd. And remember, this is unload and race. One day event. If no they're practice, back no qualify. The, if they're in the trunk of that car, it's got to be some sort of a fuel issue, yeah, I no would think. no fuel pickup or something, right? Out of the carousel here, climbing to turn 11. Kyle Larson picking up right where he left off last weekend.
Five laps complete in Sonoma. Cop caution coming at lap 10. Here are your Ford Performance track packs for today. Ford has eight wins here at Sonoma, all with different drivers, beginning with Davey Allison in 91, and most recently Kevin Hart in 2017. Coming out of the carousel and headed up to turn seven there at the bottom of your screen. Kyle Larson. Well, so so that's hard. Chris. Go ahead. I'm so, I'm sorry, Mike. I was just, it's so hard to understand the elevation changes at this racetrack. Even from this angle, you get a great idea of the, cur uh, the, the turns, how much speed these cars are carrying, this braking zone here in turn seven. But this section here coming downhill, it's pretty aggressive downhill before you start going across the start finish line. And this is where you want that front end to turn. Your car's, it's a, a really fast part of the, the track. You can see him set him up right here. When he gets high up over that uh, eight right there, always get your car loose. Trying to find the right gearing here was always difficult as well. And then setting yourself up, being good here. Man, if you run out of real estate in a last minute dive bomb, looking to the inside. So while Martin Truex has picked up a bunch of stuff, spots and is the fastest car on the racetrack. What about one of his Joe Gibbs teammates that's already fallen into trouble? Christopher Bell, Jamie. Well, Mike, talking to crew chiefs this morning, they were all worried about today's race. They just didn't have any data to go off of with this new rules package and this new tire. Ben Bayshore, the crew chief for Kyle Busch, one of those, he said this is the most stressful moment we've had all season, including the Bristol Dirt Race, because at least we had practice there. So he said they're using this 10 laps to listen to the feedback of their driver to see what they need moving forward and what strategy they'll go with. Right now, Kyle Busch saying he is stupid loose at the exit of the carousel. Thanks, Jamie. Christopher Bell made a pit stop. They had no fuel pressure. They reset the ECU and got back out on track. There's your USAA biggest movers in just six laps. No Truex plus nine. Yeah, no surprise, Mark Truex Jr. I've never seen Mark Truex Jr. this aggressive at the drop of the green flag. Right. And man, he is just picking them up, taking them down. And he is really, I tell you what, he's the fastest car. By doing all these passes, he's still been one of the fastest cars on the racetrack. Now Chase Briscoe, third on that list, won the Arca West race here yesterday. And he, I mean, he's making passes. Every time he gets to a breaking zone, a passing zone, Mark Truex Jr. is picking up a spot. And that's exactly what you saw right there. You, you know, you always talk about the breaking zone. Turn seven, use that opportunity. He's going to catch the next guy, try to set him up off of 10, moving into 11. Tyler Reddick, 11th place, uh, just two spots behind. Truex right now in that black Chevrolet. Regan? Well, Mike, Jamie just talked about teams getting feedback from their drivers. For Tyler Reddick, it's the exact opposite. He's never seen this place until today. It's actually the team that is giving him feedback on what he's doing with his brakes, his steering, his throttle, everything that he's inputting into that race car right now. Again, never saw this racetrack till this morning. Gave pace car rides just so that he could get a couple laps on the track. Thanks, Regan. Now, been a change up in the front four. Danny Hamlin. Watch the 11. The white 11 dives to the inside on William Byron. Textbook pass right there. Got off the 10 better than him with a lot of momentum. Moved to the inside. No choice but to give up that spot. You know, he just kind of held with him through turn 10. But boy, really able to be good under the braking. And downshifting, and the so downshifting. important. When you hit those downshifts, you gotta have your revs right. If you wheel hop right there, the rest is history. Let's get back to Martin Truex in ninth place and listen in on some team radio. Well, I think there's two things going on. Oh, you see that plastic just hit uh, a tear off that Kevin Harvick ran over. They're gonna, hopefully he can get to this caution. We've got a few more laps here before the competition caution. He might be in trouble right here. Um, back to, the, to what you heard Truex say. Lower downforce than the last time that we were here. That's a big contributing factor to being able to put the throttle down. Softer tire, that thing's gonna feel good that first lap or two, then it's gonna start falling off. Have to take care of these tires. You do that with a throttle pedal off the corners. I, I just love the 19 trade. He's saying how his car's not driving very good. He's just blowing by everybody. <laughs> Watch the four car, Kevin Harvick. 
locks up in the braking zone. There's there's some ripples and some bumps right there. So if you try to drive in there too deep, jump on the brakes, and you don't have the balance right on the brakes, you could very easily do just what he did, lock that right front tire up. Larry, looking at that uh, piece of vinyl cellophane, whatever it is there, on uh, the nose of that car, is that blocking a cooling inlet? Yeah, that's the radiator inlet, Mike, and they run quite a bit of opening here at Sonoma because they know how hot it is and how debris can get on it. But honestly, that's blocking the entire left side of the radiator opening. The good thing is, in about a lap and a half, we're going to get the caution for that competition caution. Bad thing is, it's several miles to get to that lap and a half. Tell That's what, a lot of racing. Guys, we've been documenting tricks, but these Gibbs guys, these, these those cars saw the 11 go to third with Denny Hamlin. Now you got Kyle Busch working on the 24 William Byron to go to fourth, and, and Truex is not too far behind those guys. Byron got a good launch out of seven. Busch took a different route, but unable to get alongside entering the S's. Yeah, and riding on board right there with Denny Hamlin and watching how they use the curbs. You know, that's one of the things I've seen here. Stress going to make a, a pass. Another pass. <laughs> Another pass on Austin Dillon. Yep. Man, that car is just so good coming down the hill to get to uh, turn 10. How about the 48 on pit road and the 18 on pit road here? Pitting under green before the competition yellow. Jamie. Yeah, Alex Bowman in. I'm telling you, these crew chiefs just were not sure what to do. They all wanted to mix up strategy, especially if they weren't starting up in the front couple of rows. So Kyle Busch, Alex Bowman in for their first stop today. Each team has five sets of tires sitting. So now those two teams, obviously four sets for the remainder of the race. So Larry, what's the rule on pitting before the competition caution? They can change tires, they can make adjustments, they cannot fuel the car until the caution is displayed for the competition caution. What you may see a lot of these teams do when the competition caution does come out, they may come and do fuel only that will shorten their time on pit road up. And because the lap time is so long here, if you're up with that front pack, you can pit and get out under green and stay on the lead lap. See right here, our leader Kyle Larson has put the 20 of Christopher Bell a lap down. He'll, when that caution comes out, he'll he'll get the free pass. So that's not too big of a deal. Now, Mike, one thing that pitting there for tires only that it will allow them to also do is stay out, and that can get you to the end of stage one without having to worry about fuel. Maybe score you some stage points. Stage lengths today: 20 laps, 20 and 50. Comes your leader, Kyle Larson, the pit road. I, and I think that those guys drew them in. As soon as they saw them pit, you about have to. Well, we've also seen, hey, uh, the fastest laps are 39, 40.0. Uh, that last lap was a 42.35 by Larson. So they've already slowed down over two seconds. That's why they're coming to get these Goodyear tires. Jamie? Chase Elliott into his box now said he's just trying to figure out how to drive the track again. It's a little bit different and it's been two years since they've been here and with no practice time. That was it. Those first handful of laps of four tire stop here. Regan. It's been smooth sailing out front for Kyle Larson. The biggest complaint with that race car. It's too tight through the right handers right now for him. That means the front end won't turn won't do what he wants it to do exactly. So Denny Hamlin assumes the lead from Brad Keselowski and Kevin Harvick. And with lap 10, NASCAR will judge it complete when most all the field has cycled through the start finish line and throw the caution. And that was what was crucial, crucial about these guys getting in there was while the pit road was still open before that competition caution comes out. You heard him say he was too tight to just the right. I like that. If a crew chief, man, that's adjustable. You can fix that. If that thing's just flat out too tight and won't turn either way, that's what's hard. But just having a right side, you can make it a track bar adjustment and, and correct that wrong. So the top five did oh, not yeah, come oh, in. Yeah, this is going to competition caution. Plus uh, drivers that did not pit include James Davis and Anthony Alfredo. Uh, Cody Ware, who has picked up 22 spots since the start of this race. Uh, and by the way, last week wasn't his best career finish. It was his best finish of the season. I was quickly reminded. Uh, also not pitting, Ben Rhodes running his first cup race. Heckert and Balicki. Competition yellow in Sonoma.
Have you entered Clint's Fox Bet Super Stage Stage 2 contest for your chance to win some of $10,000 of his money? Make sure you download the app and pick six race outcomes about Stage 2 for a shot to win. It's free to play, so why not? Don't miss out. Play time. Uh, play now while we're still in Stage 1. Or this. What do you think, Clint? Hey, let me get done with this race. I might come down there and join you there, Chase Elliott fan. All right, pit crews are about to be real busy, Jamie. Brad Kozlowski said considerable fall off and that he was getting wheel hop in the corner, especially under the braking zone. So they said, let's pit for four tires here. We'll focus on trying to win the stage and get stage points today. Regan. The plan for Denny Hamlin was the same, do everything they could to get stage points in stage one. Right now, that race car is too loose through the left-hander corners, but too tight through the right-handers. They'll have an adjustment for that. And the four car, Kevin Harvick, is absolutely plowing right now. He is not very happy with his race car. So almost everyone who did not pit the last time around has pitted now. Uh, the exceptions might be uh, Anthony Alfredo and Scott Heckert, who is driving B.J. McLeod's car this week. See the 22 here. Joey Logano hearing something about some tires on that 22 car. I don't know if he had a lockup or a flat oh. spot, but... Uh, we're going to try to see if we can't get a shot of one of the tires he took off that 22 team. We're also hearing that Austin Dillon may have a battery issue. So before we go green, here's Larry. Well, Mike, this will be our Credible.com race strategy. Probably going to make me an old man before these 90 laps are over. You pit either at the competition caution or before pit road close at the end of stage one. Essentially, everybody has pitted for the most part so far. Then it becomes a little clearer, depending on cautions. You pit right before pit road closes at the end of stage two, four tires and more fuel. And then when your fuel window opens to get to the end of the race, around 26 to 30 laps to go, you pit for possibly your final trip to pit road. Mike, that's the credible.com race strategy. Thanks, Larry. 12 laps complete. We're working the competition caution at lap 10. Lap 20 will be the end of stage one of three stages. You're looking at the entrance to turn seven, one of two hairpin corners here. So what about that issue on Austin Dillon's team? Yeah, it's holding with them off right now. 12, seven, yeah. So that means the alternator must not be, must not be charging, so we're running off the battery right now. Uh, likely what we're gonna have to do is run off this battery and then when it gets low enough, we're gonna have to come and change it if, if the alternator does not kick back on. And what else that means is that you've got to conserve that battery to make it last as long as you possibly can. And we know, even though it's not a hot day here, the sun is out and these guys work hard. All the shifting, all the braking that they do, they really have to get the air moving. And so they run those fans to the driver, try to cool that driver. Can't do that right now for Austin Dillon. All right, let's check back in with Regan. Well, guys, just to update the 22 of Joey Logano, the right rear tire on that race car actually came apart, started to delaminate just a little bit as you see it right there. So big issue, good break for them to have this competition caution this early. Wow. wow. This looked like a flat well, spot. Flat spot. Yeah. Like a wheel locked yeah. up, but you wouldn't think that on a rear tire. I, if that was a front tire, I said, I just locked it up, but boy, on a rear tire. Didn't expect that. You know, back to Austin Dillon and the alternator issue that you heard, you know, yes, Jeff, you're right. You could turn your, your personal blowers off, but the blowers that we run on these road courses and the brakes and things like that, they take a lot of amperage. You can't shut that off. So deja vu all over again with Larson and Elliott on the front row for the restart. The front five take off, and Truex is one of them. I'm going to have to call Martin Truex and tell him, hey, I'm sorry I didn't give you more credit no leading into this race. <laughs> Unbelievable job by him passing as many cars as he has, putting himself in contention. Already, what, 13 laps into this race, he is, I promise you, the Hendrick boys are talking about the 19 coming. Third place. See how important it is to get that drive off the bottom lane as you saw Kyle Busch 
trying to run to the outside of the 24, William Byron. What about this breaking zone? Has he got anything for him there? And I agree with you, Clint. I, I thought, okay, he might be able to get up to ninth, 10th. Track position is hard to gain here. You only have really two sections to do that in. But man, great job to Martin Truex Jr. I don't think he's gonna get close enough. But he might here. You see, this is such a, we, we keep talking about this. This is my favorite part of the racetrack. Trying to get him set up, get close enough to him right here off a of 10 where you can try to make a pass, look him in the inside. He didn't close enough. Well, and we all know, right? It only gets tougher and tougher as you get up to that top five. Ooh, Those guys have some good speed. Down to the inside, Michael McDowell made the pass on Chris Buescher there. And Kurt Busch tried to outbreak Daniel Suarez into 11. Oh, yeah, there's a lot of action further back going into turn 11. Up the hill, turn two. See Ross Chastain making a nice move up to turn two there behind those guys. Eric Jones is the driver that Ross Chastain was able to make that move on. Kyle Larson has now led more laps today than in his six prior Sonoma starts combined. It, you know, it's funny to hear you say that because he said on, well, I think, four poles here, always has crazy fast speed, struggled, you know, in the Ganassi cars with the long run stuff, but was always blistering fast for one lap. Through turn seven and headed for the S's. You won't miss a minute because we're going to take you Fox side by side. Sixteen laps complete. Kyle Larson has led 14 of them. Kenny Hamlin led two laps before he stopped. And that puts these two groups of drivers on very differing strategies. What's to be gained by waiting till that comp caution to pit other than you have fresher tires for this restart. Yeah, I'm, I'm really curious to bring Larry McReynolds in. He, he's got the pulse of the garage, but clearly, you know, these guys know, oh, Den, uh, Denny Hamlin's got some damage. That's the other reason you don't want to lose track position. You can get caught up in a lot of things, especially in those braking zones like turn 11. But, 
you know, let's bring in Larry because Larry, I just want to know what the two, what the 11, some of those guys that stayed out, you know, what is, how is this going to play out for them? Well, I like to say it's a very fluid situation. If you put <laughs> it before the competition caution, you've got tires only. I feel like they're going to have to pit possibly right before pit road closes at the end of stage one here in a couple laps. If you are like Joey Logano, who came back and got fuel during a competition caution, or someone that pitted during that caution like Blaney, like Harvick, Custer, you probably plan on staying out and running it out to the end of stage two, trying to get that track position. And, and I gotta say, to me, Larry, they're gonna be sitting ducks on old tires if these other guys come and get new tires, and, and they might lose even more track position. What has happened here to Denny Hamlin? Uh, right side, right side. Check the nose. Damage. Copy the damage. Pass back. This up. We haven't yet. Take care of it. From Wallace, Chase Briscoe coming to pit road with three to go in stage one. Well, this is about to start a firestorm, I believe, because no some of these guys further back couldn't wait, right? Because the leader is going to you know, be too far ahead of them, and they will close those pits. I guarantee the leader, some of those guys in the top five, ten, will be coming in the well, next yeah, lap Jeff, or they'll, so. They'll have to come because, again, once the leader crosses the start-finish line, pit road will be closed this next time. Ross Chastain, Ryan Newman in. Don't tell Kyle Larson, but stage one winners at Sonoma, well, that just hasn't been a winning plan. Well, you're not going to have to worry about telling him he won't be the winner this stage either, Mike. He's coming to pit road, I guarantee you. But here it shows it all. And that right there shows you why this place is so wild and crazy when it comes to strategy. And on the pit stop, Bubba Wallace, too fast exiting. So he'll have to do a drive through penalty down pit road. Well, I might be wrong on the five. I, I don't know when they're going <laughs> to shut the pits, but he did not come. Larry, we need you, buddy. <laughs> this... <laughs> well, I think it's the next time by, though. Is that not? If I'm not mistaken, I think it's the next time in that. Well, uh, by right now close Jeff that was oh two my. to go when Larson crossed the start finish line that was two to go pit road immediately closed so wow. did Byron make it that is the question did he make it to the yellow line in time was the commit I think it's the commitment line that's where pit road right. starts but he made it past the commitment line which is on the other side and NASCAR hey, the confirms. commitment line here is a concrete wall <laughs> <laughs> yeah NASCAR confirms that's a good that's a legit stop by Byron he made it to the pit road before the pits were closed. I'm shocked that the, the five and some of these other guys stayed out right there. But that goes to show you that I think the 11 and the two, some of those guys made it, maybe had to make them make some adjustments on the fly. That's the fun of this race, yeah. though. That's such a, the unpredictability of being out here on these road courses at Sonoma. Michael McDowell, Chris Buescher, Daniel Suarez all pitted under green here. And at about two laps, we'll see how it shakes out. So how is Chase Elliott's day going so far? We're gonna pit this time, we'll pit this time. Copy. Yeah, never mind, they closed pit road for some reason. Ooh, maybe Ooh, that's why the five and the nine stayed out. Jeff, the only other reason that Kyle Larson would have stayed out, and again, I'm kind of with you about the sit and duck. Do they plan on possibly staying out at the end of stage one? They're only going to have about seven and a half laps on those tires, which I know is a lot, but that could be in the plan. Well, they're definitely going yeah, to now, but I don't think that was in the plan <laughs> listening to Allen right there. This could have been a mistake, hopefully not a costly mistake for this team. Well, fortunately for them, They've, they've kept a lot of the other guys out on track also behind them. Yeah, you've got to go all the way back pretty far before you start looking at the guys like Byron's all the way back in 31st before you go to anybody that's actually pitted here before the end of this stage is over. So now, Mike, go back to that stat. Yeah. Kyle Larson is going to win this 
first stage. What is that going to mean for that five team going forward into this race? Because we've never seen stage winners win this race. Then I got like, a, what was it? Seven point something percent. <laughs> <laughs> Stats don't lie. Gonna have to do something there. You never know about this place, though. I mean, we, I, in my opinion, we talked about it before this race ever started we, in our meeting. You know, when are these guys going to pit? How is it going to be utilized around that uh, lap 10 competition caution? We knew that was a pivotal moment in this race, and it turns out it's pretty true. Final lap of stage one. Hendrick Camaros for Larson and Elliott, leading Joe Gibbs Camrys for Kyle Busch and Martin Truex. Can you believe Kyle Larson has won six of the last eight stages we have run this year. Beats Chase Elliott to the flag boy 3.8. Kyle Busch, Truex and Bowman. DiBenedetto and Kurt Busch fighting it out for eighth place. Give that to Kurt. And the final stage point, Eric Jones. Kyle Larson dominating stage racing this year.
Kyle Larson leading at Sonoma at the end of stage one. Well, we got a sneak peek into Austin Dillon's favorite ritual. Here's Fast Cooking, sponsored by Coca-Cola. Austin, what is going on, man? You got, uh, you got quite the spread here. Yeah, welcome to the house. Uh, we're doing a little grilling. I love to grill. Family loves it, so we do a little hot dogs, man. It's my, it's my go-to. I really like putting barbecue sauce on my hot dogs, so let's put a little barbecue sauce on these. I like to put braised onions on my hot dogs, so we'll throw a little onions in here. Some strong smells. Yeah, I, I, might, I might shed a tear for you here right now. Yeah, a little vegetable oil, salt, and pepper. We'll just go ahead and use this, throw it in there. Now that we got the onions mixed up, we're gonna put them over here in the grill. We're grilling. I like it, nicely done, man. Fast cooking for Austin and uh, battery issues for his car. You saw the hood up, they were replacing the alternator belt and the battery. Not sure if the alternator got replaced as well, but. Pretty sure they can't change that alternator that quick, but yeah. maybe they did see something there with the belt that uh, might fix whether the alternator starts functioning. Yeah, but again. if that belt's broke, usually it's due to the alternator being locked up, bearing going out or something like that. All right, now remember we had the question of Chase Elliott as to whether he would pit before the stage ended, and they said, well, the pit road was closed for some reason. So we listened in. What was the deal on that? Why'd they close it? Uh, I'm confused. I'm not really sure why they did that. That's not typically the way it works per the rule. When the leader gets the two to go, that's when they shut it and we didn't get there. I'm still confused. I'm a little confused yep. too. And it's change it's gonna change this strategy up big time again. Pit road's open, Jamie. Kyle Bush says he's left on the left, he's loose. To the right, he is tight. So they're still gonna work on that, make some adjustments here, including air pressure, a four tire stop for the 18. The nine of Chase Elliott finally come into their pit box. He gets a tear off, has to do it easily around that windshield wiper little bit tight they're working on it but they're still all scratching their heads about what happened they wanted to pin before guys Regan where your leader Kyle Larson that race car right now is swinging the back too much on that run meaning it's going back and forth as he goes through the S's in different parts of the racetrack the eight car of Tyler Reddick that car doesn't have forward drive when he hits the gas pedal he needs help with that here's your Ram race off pit road now this is not for the lead Boy, that's the least amount of position changes on pit road we've seen all season. Jeff, your timing is not going to be good on this radio <laughs> communication uh -huh. right here. <laughs> I'm very curious. So two contenders did not stop. Kurt Busch, who's the new leader, and Matt DiBenedetto, they did not come in. Style up our stage one winner. Hey, Kyle, this is Jeff, the guys up in the Fox Sports booth. You got us? Yeah, I got you. Well, I got to be honest. I didn't think I was going to be talking to you as the stage winner because uh, we just expected you guys to come down pit road. We've heard some different miscommunications on whether it was going to be open or closed. Was this part of your strategy or were you thrown off by it also? Um, I don't really know. I think this was part of our plan, <laughs> uh, but I just kind of drive until they tell me to pit or not, so I don't <laughs> pay attention as much as I should, I guess, the strategy. But um, either way, yeah, we picked up good points and another playoff point, so happy about that. Now pass some more cars here and see if we can set ourselves up for the end of the race good all right man hey well you're doing your part behind the wheel getting after it so uh, good luck the rest of the way thank you yeah Great. thanks guys so he is the first of the cars that pitted kyle larson our stage winner will restart 15th
The Xfinity more than fast moment from Charlotte goes to Tommy Joe Martins. He avoids that spinning 39 car to stay in the race, proving it takes more than speed to succeed. Vote for this week's more than fast moment at Xfinity Racing on Twitter. Xfinity, proud premier partner of NASCAR. Coming green this time for stage number two. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Now and, things and, get and, interesting. And your boy Kurt Busch is up here leading this race. But that front row has not been on pit road since lap 10. He was my long shot. This guy can get it done. They have the oldest tires on the track right now. You know, Kurt Busch told us in the pre-race show, they're so far below the cut line, they're not worried about anything but winning a race. Yeah. And Austin Dillon, who's having that battery problem, he is 14th in points and 16th is the cutoff. This could be a pivotal race for if, them. If you're the five of, of Larson, the nine of Elliott, those guys, true exits back there. These guys are on old tires. Very important not to, not to knock the front end off of it like we saw with Denny Hamlin in 11. Very tricky to do, get up through these, the right. field. The new tires are about row nine on back, or excuse me, row, row eight and back. That's where Larson and Elliott line up. Kurt Busch, Matt Benedetto. here we go. I think the guy to watch here might be that 24, William Byron. Just remember, he came in at lap 18, so he's got, he's the first one with slightly fresher tires than these guys he's racing around. You can see the traffic right there in front of Kyle, three wide. That's not what you want to no. see with the fastest car here leading all them laps. You're mired back in traffic. But honestly, this is what I wanted to see out of that team. Can he pass up through this field like we saw Martin Shrex do? I saw him putting big lap times out on that clean air out front. I want to see it in traffic. How about this drone cam footage? Amazing. Awesome. So good. So you see Kurt Busch on your track map leading. And uh, the next little marching ant there is the five, which is Kyle Larson, who is in 14th. Right the now. other thing that I see right there is you're looking for Larson. Look up and you see Chase Elliott yeah. past him. Exactly. And when, we, and when they dropped the green, that outside lane that the five car was in, because remember, we don't have the choose rule here. You have to line up by position. He was in that outside lane, and man, they just did not get up and go when they dropped the green, and he lost a couple spots immediately. Sixth place here. Well, a nice recovery for Christopher Bell, who's won a race on the road course in Daytona earlier in the season. So he knows how to go left and right, but under a lot of pressure from a little bit fresher tires on the 24 Byron. Yeah, think about it. He was a lap down this a little bit ago. <laughs> That's right. He got back on the lead lap when Kyle Larson pitted before the end of stage one. Byron stalking Bell down the hill. over that blind rise to the carousel. And the other question is how long do those fresher tires create more grip as you're passing up through the field like Chase Elliott, like the five of Larson, some of these other guys further back, Truex and them, Kyle Busch, how how much how many many laps do you have of that much fresher better yeah. grip in those good years to take advantage of it. Will it eventually level out with those guys on older tires? And you know it will, and that's the hardest thing to do is capitalize on the benefactor of having that, you know, better grip. You got to pounce on them when you can because it will equalize. Kozlowski and Blaney, third and fourth. Byron inside of Hamlin, turn 11. Well, we saw the opposite of this, right? Earlier in the race, these two guys are battling it out. Hard to beat that fresh rubber on those Goodyear tires. Just 
see Denny Hamlin going up the top of the hill. You have a choice there. Some guys will go all the way down to first gear. Which Some guys I think might I use... heard Denny Hamlin do that right Because there. he made that last uh, shift at the very top of the hill. That tells me, yes, he's going down to first gear to get that drive off the corner. Some guys, ooh, they just Easy keep pretty wild there. I think Chase is feeling a lot of pressure from Kyle Larson coming behind him, made an aggressive move there. I, Chris Buescher not happy with that contact. No. Kyle gave him a shot and Buescher whacked him back. <laughs> And that's the other thing. If you're Kyle Larson, you're sitting there. He's going to punch that hole. Get underneath that car. You got to make sure you go with him, and that, that it closes up. If you don't, it's just another separation. You have to wait to a turn seven, to a turn eleven, to get it. Christopher Bell, right in the mix in seventh place now, Jamie. Well, Mike, early in this race, he had no fuel pressure, had to come in. You guys mentioned he went a lap down. Hats off to him and this team, not only back on the lead lap, but strategy paying off. He had never been to this racetrack in anything before. No practice laps. They didn't know what to expect here. They need a good run today, guys. This 20 team has finished outside the top 10 the last six straight weeks. And he battles with Denny Hamlin with the Hendrick Camaros behind him. You saw William Byron make that pass, and that pass was begun all the way at turn nine when Byron got a great run down the chute from 10 to 11. Yeah, and it also began when Rudy Fugel made that decision to come down pit road before the end of that stage. Big tire rub for Tyler Reddick. That's why he's on pit road. Well, the, these restarts are crazy here because you go immediately into a left hand, then a right hand, back left, then right. You're trying to be side by side. See where that contact came from. Looking back from Alex Bowman. Whoa! Whoa. <laughs> Tyler Reddick dive bomb into seven. Yeah, that oh. wasn't a dive bomb. Not that only a dive bomb, it was on the outside putting him three wide. That was a pretty gutsy move right there. 27 of 90 laps complete in wine country in the Toyota Save Mark 350.
William Byron is our new leader as he outbreaks Kurt Busch, took the inside line away from Busch's Camaro and set sail. Little contact between teammates here as Kyle Busch got into the back of Christopher Bell. Yeah, that's a tough place to make that pass. I think he just maybe misjudged it a little bit, but that's a lot of damage to the right front fender. Oh, whoa, now major that's some damage big on Blaney right there. Left front fender. And Ryan Blaney not happy about everything right now. All right, stop moving every one of the teammates. Walk in the shop. Copy that. Ooh, this is an important pass right here. That car's got the a lot of damage. 19 on, on, the, on the nine car. But yeah, that 12 has a lot of damage. And obviously it, something happened with he and his teammate. Not sure which one that was. I'm assuming that was Keselowski. Here comes Kyle Larson to the inside of Kurt Busch. Remember, Busch is on older tires. In fact, the front four cars are all on differing pit strategies. Byron was in at lap 18. Larson at lap 22. Keselowski lap 12. Kurt Busch lap 10. You know, I thought that that was a game changer with those guys not pitting before the end of the stage. But Larson's so fast, it might not matter what strategy he's on. 30 laps complete with William Byron out front. Let's go under the helmet with Denny Hamlin. Brought to you by Toyota. My second season is when we started the Denny Hamlin Foundation, which mostly benefits cystic fibrosis. My cousin has cystic fibrosis, and I remember playing with him as a kid and seeing all the medications he had, and I, I never understood why. That's the, the charity that I want to give back to. There's been a lot of different charities that, that I've I've seen in, in a lot of hospitals, kids' hospitals I've gone to that have really, you know, when I go there, I'm like, I want to give to this group because once you see it firsthand and the difference that you can make, it, it really changes your life. Nice work by Denny Hamlin, who currently is ninth. So we have drivers that pitted at lap 10, 18, 22, and 12. <laughs> Pick a strategy. Go ahead, any strategy. I think we're going to have to bring in Larry back for this one. Help us out, Larry. Well, the bottom line is when, when the when this caution comes out for this next stage in stage two, which is about 10 laps from now, we're still going to have, you know, over 45 laps to go when we restart. But I just think if you want to win this race, whether you're William Byron, Kyle Larson, or we talked about Kurt Busch in that one car needing to win, you better be hitting pit road here in about seven laps before they close pit road and get those fresh tires and you'll be ready to go for one more stop about halfway through the end stage, regardless of what agenda you're on right now. Well, I can tell you this. My mind has been changed. Fast <laughs> cars make fast lap times, and that's what I've seen out of the five, the 19. Doesn't matter the strategy. These guys can get to the front. Uh -oh. What's this? Speaking of the 47, of Stenhouse, oh. that's Oh, oh turn out of turn man, one. Man. Oh, he's wow. gotten he's, into the wall yep. hard. Carry and a the lot right of speed front tires down. One. And caution is on the speedway. This is going to shake things up. Oh, man, look how hard he has hit that barrier. That's on the front straightaway before you get to turn one or maybe right <laughs> in turn one. Oh, man, that right front oh, tire right is front already blue. down. Yeah, I'd be wondering if he had a, a tire rub or something. Pretty hard hit right yeah. there. Well, that's a fast section of this racetrack. You just don't, you take it for granted. Camera lived. Yeah. <laughs> and I think back through the years, this turn one and some of the things that it's created, we've seen cars going upside down into some tire barriers in that section many years ago. Remember, no inner liners on these tires as we'd run on the super speedways. So, Larry, uh, does this caution change any or everything? 
It's so clear I can see mud right now. <laughs> <laughs> but right now, you can actually pit right here and make it on one more stop, regardless about the stage in or not. So you might see some cars coming right here to make it on one more stop. So you could stop now, but would you stop now? Let's discuss that during the commercial break. NASCAR at Sonoma, caution three for Ricky Stenhouse, turn one, flat tire. The pits are open and Kyle Larson has chosen to stay out. Many of the other leaders have come to pit road. Jamie. Kurt Busch, one of those teams desperate for a good run today. They haven't had a top 10 finish since February at Homestead. Strategy playing into their favorite four tire stop here, the 24 of William Byron. They have the back end in the track now. He wants the front end to work a little bit better. So they're going to change that with an air pressure adjustment to help him out. And the nine of Chase Elliott in with an air pressure adjustment for tires as well. Regan. We saw the damage on Ryan Blaney's car. That forced their hand to pit right here. He's been very concerned about that on the radio. He also hurt his tires early in that run, racing too hard with guys, burned them up, didn't have anything left. You see him pulling the fender out right now, and the car drops off the jack, so more problems for Ryan Blaney. Under caution, Guido from the movie Cars made an appearance. You know the little forklift from Guido and Luigi's tire oh, shop? Yeah. He drove right down the front straightaway to where Ricky Stenhouse moved the big barrier, picked it up, and set it right back in place. We are good to go. <laughs> there he is. Hey, there he is. A little forklift. And there hey. is Lightning McQueen on display for the fans. Good thing that car's not on track. <laughs> Nobody oh, yeah. has some downforce. <laughs> cool light year tires. And of course, Pixar headquartered not far from us. 
here in Northern California. How about your Xfinity fastest laps today? Kyle Larson, Chase Elliott, Kyle Busch. Boy, that looks a lot like last week's finish, doesn't it? <laughs> it sure Martin does. Truex, Alex Bowman. Now, Alex Bowman has been saying all week, I'm not a road racer. i am got to learn from these other guys. Well, boy, he is taking it all to heart. Boy, he's showing he's got speed, and hey, he's in the top five right now. So somebody else who knows how fast Kyle Larson is are the folks who are calling the shots for William Byron. Listen to this. I still don't load the front three, but if I put enough load into it, then I'm good. Just got to put enough load into it. You want to tell him how much faster the five is than he was that last? No. I mean, what good does that do? Just in case he's saving. I don't know. <laughs> hey, you don't have to tell him. He saw that in his mirror. He saw that five car getting closer and closer. <laughs> Rudy Fugel calling the shots. But hey, now he's got the fresh tires now. Maybe he That's can right. go after Kyle Larson, Mark Truex, and those guys on older tires. So next week is NASCAR's All-Star break, and we have the All-Star race next Sunday on FS1 at Texas Motor Speedway for a shot at a million bucks next Sunday, 730 Eastern, and we have two announcements about the All-Star race. The side deal will perform the national anthem made up of founding members of Train, Sugar Ray, and Pawn Shop Kings, and Sammy Hagar will be there at Texas Motor Speedway to play I Can't Drive 55 just before the green flag. Yeah. Very cool. God, that just makes me want to sing, and I'm not going to on live television. Please do, Jeff. I love that song. So a couple of cars stayed out there, Jamie. Well, James Small left it up to his driver, Martin Truex Jr., to pit or not, and so he decided to stay out when he saw that the five was staying out. So their communication afterwards went like, all right, well, he's the car that's fastest today, so let's stay with him, but time will tell if we're good enough to hang with them on old tires. All right. In all, 16 drivers did not pit here at lap 33. Those with the oldest tires are Ross Chastain in third and Bubba Wallace in 11th. They last pitted at lap 17. So Kurt Busch and Chase Elliott back in row nine are the first drivers with new tires. And here we go. This is the matchup I've been wanting to see. I want to see if Martin Truex can keep pace with this five car and the speed they had. over 3A, another blind exit corner. You're on the throttle, you just hope there's asphalt under you when you get there. And into four. And then you better hop on the brakes real quick and make that right-hander. And then they'll pop over the top and down into the carousel. You have to be careful getting into this carousel you see right here. The car really likes to get Whoa. by. Just like see a little contact right there yep. between Eric Jones and Corla Joy. And then down into the seven right here, big passing opportunity here. Seen a lot of guys have trouble here. A lot of finners knocked in. Hey, Briscoe got a lot of laps yesterday in that ARCA race. Making some good moves here. Bubba trying to put on a good show. He's got Michael yep. Jordan in the house. Kurt Busch up to ninth, a gain of five with those new tires. And where'd all that dust come from? Have a look. And nobody giving an inch. You see. Oh, he was Eric, there. Yeah, he was there. No, no doubt. Eric Jones tried to squeeze him, and that's where that contact came from. Good thing it never rains out here. He would have been <laughs> in trouble right there. And that's a good point. You know, on a, a track like Coda that we were at last, that was a paved runoff area. The drought out here has really created a, you know, these guys, I've seen them get off at turn 10. Where years pass, I've been out here. That was a for sure wreck. Kurt Busch and William Byron are making the best of those new tires. Byron's up four, Busch is up five, and then gave one back. Bubba Wallace just ahead as you watch from our Monster Energy Cam. Kurt Busch is the only driver up. Uh, front there without a win this year. 
up at the very front. Now, of course, Corey LaJoy in sixth, Ryan Priest in seventh, Chase Briscoe eighth, Bubba Wallace ninth, as they've cycled through. Pretty good wow. battle right here, three wide. Somebody's Suarez. gonna have to lift. <laughs> Byron doing it the hard way on the outside there. I think Daniel Suarez opted out of that battle. Probably a good decision right there. Seven is a double apex corner. You, you can see there you enter and then you kind of flatten out, squares up and then you enter again. But where these guys, William Byron, his teammate, Whoa. Chase. That is not an area you can run no. side by side and, and not make contact. A little bit there. See, William had to lift and give it, let him get it gathered up. Is he going to make an ambitious move here to get position in this right hander? No, not able to do it. Well, how about down into 11? As Larson and Truex lead them off that corner. Yeah, there, oh, yeah. There's the two of Brad Keselowski. Wasn't, wasn't really there, but he just made a late breaking move. Still not able to complete that pass on the 24. Brian Newman, Cole Custer side by side for 24th. By the way, Ricky Stenhouse made it back to the pits, made repairs. He's back on track a lap down. This is coming back down the hill through the S's. See, William Byron, he gets up on that curb trying to stay away from his teammate, but it just pushes him over into the door. But really no damage on the nine car. Now, Mike, when I look at Larson, Trix, Jr., Logano, Bowman, Chastain, and a few others, they they got about a lap cushion. They're either going to come this lap or the next lap. Wow, there's a power move for Chase Elliott around the outside of Bubba Wallace. Now he's got the inside on Byron. How about that? Racing hard. Yeah, that's a power move by William Byron. He got, lost that position. Now this is the same. Chase he's putting him. His, uh, he backed out of it, but that was putting him in the same situation that Chase had him in a lap before. So here's a question from Clint's $10,000 game here in stage two. How many Fords will finish in the top five? Well, there's one there now, Joey Logano. Well, one just peeled off for pit road. Okay. See, William Byron was able to take advantage. We saw Chase Elliott going after the 14 of Chase Briscoe right there, and that opened the door for William Byron to kind of go three wide. Well, a little contact between Kyle Busch and Chase Elliott now. Whoa, look at Ryan Priest curb climbing, putting that thing up on two wheels those at the top all, of two. Those are always the best shots you leave here, and there's all kinds of awesome pictures of climbing that curb yep. and the car up on two wheels like you just saw Ryan Priest do. Excuse me, that was the curb at 3A. Another blind exit corner. So now right, we guys. have uh, four cars at the top, Larry, that haven't been on pit road since lap 22 and Chastain since lap 17. And Mike, they have to come this time. They've got to pit this time. Oh, flat tire in the left rear, William, uh, Bubba Wallace. So if you're he thinking about pitting, you just pitted. He got to keep an eye pitted. on that guy, make sure he can get all the way around. There's and Truex is in. Five stays out on track. Again. So probably knock the valve stem or valve core off of it on that 23 car in that pit stop, Jamie. James Small told Martin Truex Jr. do the opposite of the five. If he stays out, we pit. So they did just that. Four tires stop here. Air pressure adjustment for the 19 team. Truex trying to make it three straight wins at Sonoma. Like that call. That crew chief wanted to see if he could hold pace with him. Not quite so much. Tell you what we're going to do. We're going to get off cycle with him. That's how we can beat him. Lap and a half to go, stage two. 
All I know is Cliff Daniels and Kyle Larson, they got a fast car, but they don't have nine lights. I don't know if they can keep <laughs> doing this. <laughs> uh, Bubba coming down through the S's with that flat. Looks like he's going to make it back to pit road. That's absolute worst case scenario on that 23. It's coming apart a little bit right there. These are not run flat tires. But if that thing lays a carcass out on it right in the middle of the racetrack, they're going to be forced to. You can see it just oh. barely holding on. Did a good job, Bubba. That was a complete lap that he had to nurse that thing back around here. And he is safely on pit road. So hopefully we'll get to finish this stage but without it, incident. Unfortunately, oh, there, there it goes. goes right there, there it went. That now, might still bring out the caution, but we're going to have a caution here pretty soon. Question is whether he goes a lap down. I think he will. Yep. If that would have happened right here in the middle of the racetrack, they'd have been forced to throw a caution. That was very, very lucky for some of those guys and the strategy call that they made. So here's Larson, and when he rounds off uh, this kink and passes the start-finish line, he will put Bubba Wallace one lap down. Building those playoff points right now. You know, these stages, nobody's won more of them this year than Kyle Larson. And you start looking at, at wins, you add that to those playoff points, and those things will make a big difference when you get later in the season. Got to lift this thing up, get it on the jack. Good job. A couple of nice runs in this part of the going. Corey LaJoy in ninth place in the number seven. Pretty good company you see him with right there. Yep. Kyle Bush. Denny Hamlin, Brad Keselowski. And he's on older tires than a lot of these guys he's racing around right now. They might pick him off here. Oh. Ooh, Hold his contest. own. That's staying tough right there. That was kind of a late last minute dive bomb right there by Denny. And, and you know, he held his own, stayed alive. Now, Michael McDowell also has uh, the tires on his car. Tenth place race here. Who's going to get that final stage point? Boy, hard to make that car stick. Those front tires slide out on the outside of that carousel. In any of our pre-race discussion, did we ever talk about Kyle Larson as being a great road racer? I'll tell you what we did, did. I don't remember. Well, I, I knew that he was fast, and, and obviously I said that he'd been on some poles here but the long run speed that he and his team has. But moreover, the decision to lead, you know, stages, win these stages and try to have, uh, you know, be in a conversation for the win, that was something that we did talk about. No way you can win stages and win this race. They're going for it. Stage two to Kyle Larson. Joey Logano is about 6.2 seconds back. Alex Bowman, a second behind him. Kurt Busch leads Chase Elliott across the line, then it's Byron, Kyle Busch, Keslowski, Hamlin, and by one car link, Christopher Bell picks up the last stage point. It is Kyle Larson's 21st playoff point. 11 stage wins and two victories so far.
41 laps complete in the Toyota Safe Mart 350, the end of stage two. Three drivers would just that were last on pit road at lap 22 out in front of a whole bunch that came at 33. So let's check with Larry for today's right combination sponsored by Subway. Yeah, Mike, 19 team Martin Trex Jr. and Sonoma Raceway. Martin has three Sonoma wins, including the last two. He's the only repeat winner in our last 11 races here. His three wins at Sonoma, it's been with three different teams. He has led the most laps in four of the last seven Sonoma races, including the last three. And in fact, in those three, he led 47% of the laps there. Sounds like me, the subway right combination for Martin Trex Jr. to get his fourth Sonoma win. Could well be, Larry, but now we're going to have to sort through his running order, which currently is 28th. Now, that will change as many of these lead lap drivers pit, but we don't expect them all to. Chase Elliott is fifth. They are discussing their options. Yeah, so we can go as little as 15 and make it to a window. And we have the option to two-stop it. You know, you could do 15, get to your window, you know, go to the end hoping for caution and or, you know, we do stop it. So we got options. I think just get going and clean air and make lap time is going to be the key. Well, I think that that pretty much told us what the nine team is going to do. They're going to stay out here. I just don't know those top three guys that pitted at lap 22, Larson, Logano, Bowman. Pretty sure they'll be on pit road here. Yeah, they have they tires. They have to pit. Yes. They have to pit. They last got tires 19 laps ago. Chase Elliott's tires are only eight laps old. That's right. Oh, Chase Elliott looks like he's decided. No, no. that's the fake. <laughs> Sake. A little deep there. Jamie. Alex Bowman said his front turn started to go away, but he is about the only driver I've heard today that's happy with his race car, enjoying it. A top five here would be great for this team. But like you guys said, they had to come in here. The top three had last pitted on 22. Regan. Well, Kyle Larson, that's this run. The tires were a little slicker because of the cycles that were on them. The turns 10 in the carousel were the, in particular the big problem. And Joey Logano, his braking isn't good. He's tight through all the corners. He needs more rear grip. He doesn't like anything right now. By the way, he's running second. Four new Goodyear tires and top off the tank. And here's your Ram race off pit road. Again, not for the lead, but among the cars that pitted. Eric Almirola gains a spot. He's been a top 15 car all day. Good for him. And Corey LaJoy. I want uh, to talk to the stage in 12th. I want to talk to the 19 Martin Shrex Jr. Martin Shrex Jr. Clip Boyer up this booth here. You got me? Yeah, I got you, bud. All right, man. You got track position on him. Seems like you and the five car. Cars to beat right here. Been a battle of track position. Both of you guys got up through the field fast, was able to pass cars, both of you fast out by yourselves. What do you got here for the end of the race? I don't know. No, we'll set to see how it all plays out here. So been a, been a lot of stuff happening and just uh, trying to keep it somewhat clean, you know, in all these restarts and uh, the best pro shop Toyota is really fast and I think it's uh, like you said, the five's real fast as well, so there's a couple cars that are really good. We'll just see how it all plays out and uh, hopefully be uh, where we need to be at the end. Absolutely, bud. Good luck. Thank you, man. Truex will restart 15th. Larson will restart 21st. Stage three at Sonoma coming right up on FS1.
now. Kevin Harvick, 9 and 10 is Chris Butcher. 11 is Ryan Newman, 12 is Anthony Alfredo. And Bill Rose had a decent run today. He was up to 13 this season. Getting ready for stage three to take the green flag. Seven rows of drivers stayed out all the way back to Ryan Blaney's. Seven rows full, 14 drivers did not hit. Now they're doing another battery replacement on Austin Dillon's car, Larry. Well, Mike, Justin Alexander, the crew chief, they've been fighting this since right before the end of stage one. So let, let's go to our Ford Performance Cutaway car and let's show you how they go about changing the battery. It's not under the hood like in your passenger car. It's in front of the left rear tire. They take that door right there off. They slide the battery out. It's a quick disconnect. Slide the other one in. Actually a pretty quick change, but it gets kind of old, Mike, after doing it about two or three times during a race. Wow, I'll bet. He is on the lead lap. Now, Bubba Wallace was the only car one lap down at the stage ending caution. However, he had pitted because of that shredded tire when the pits were closed, making him ineligible for the free pass. Yeah, that was just a, a tough double tough whammy break for him. So Kurt Busch and Chase Elliott to be on the front row, the first seven rows have tires that are five laps older than Martin Truex on back. Kurt Busch has done a good job keeping that car yeah. up front. Fenders are on it still. I mean, they started 28 up there leading this field. So everybody's going to have to stop one more time. Will it happen under green? Will we have another caution? Lots still have left to happen in this race. Out of turn 11 onto the pit straight. And we're back under green. pop over the hill and down to the carousel. You know, I was just, as I'm watching these amazing shots from our drone and all the camera work that uh, our folks at Fox Sports do, thank you so much for this great action. But it just makes me think about this, this track. Every time you get position on somebody, Mike, and you get to the inside, what happens next? You go to the next corner, it's opposite turn, right? You're, you're on the inside on a right-hander, it goes right to a left-hander. It's so hard to complete a pass unless maybe you get down to one of these big braking zones like we're in right now in turn seven. Now, Ryan Blaney on the outside at seven. That will put him on the inside entering the S's for 12, to and your point. Then, and then we're going to turn right. Then yeah. we're going to turn left. Then we're back right. Chris Buescher just ahead in 11th. And this is where you want to put the pressure on, just like you keep talking about this, Jeff. It all comes down to this corner right here. Getting off at of turn 10 to set up a pass, like you see the nine looking to the inside Ooh. of Kurt. But you have to be so careful to downshift, not wheel hop. So easy to wheel hop right there. And man, great job not to wheel hop and take the lead. Number nine, Chase Elliott, our new leader. Now Martin Truex had some uh, contact back up at the top of the course, I believe the turn seven area. Man, we were just talking about that. Nope. Keeping the fenders on this thing, you get bit. Mired Ooh, back in traffic. Oh, he tried man. to stay off of the 77 right there and got into the left rear of Blaney. 
I'm surprised I'm not seeing more damage from either of those cars. But that that's where it gets very difficult. You're talking about track position versus uh, tires. And, and, you know, once you get mired back in traffic like Truex is and like the five, you see a Larson there, man, it's so easy to take yourself out of get knocked off the track, damage to the car. You saw it with Denny Hamlin in 11, same thing. Laning to the inside of Ryan Newman, picks up a spot. That's the emotional roller coaster of these road courses, though. You know, when you're out there smooth sailing, even if you're Kyle Larson, you know, out there just drumming them in that first stage, sooner or later, it's going to come full circle and you're going to have a, a, you know, whole fleet of cars you're going to have to pass. All right, all right. So my question for both you guys and Larry, we can bring you in on this too. Which strategy would you want to be in right now? Which position would you, you want to be Chase Elliott up front there with track position? Or, or do you want to be somebody like Truex or the five of Larson with fresh tires? I still want to be up front with track <laughs> position, knowing that everybody's probably, Jeff, going to pit about the same time, somewhere around 28, 29, Look 30 out. laps to go. Look out. Three wide, Eric Jones on the inside of Busher and Kyle Larson. Wow, as Truex completed the pass on Ryan Newman. What about you? Boyer, what do you think? Where would you like to be? I mean, of course, it's easy to say you want to be Chase Elliott and clean air out front right now. I want track position for all the reasons that we've just talked about. Getting damaged back here, getting caught up in somebody else's battle happens time and time again. It's happened to me at this racetrack. When I'm out front, I can control my destiny. You get me back there, sometimes you're at the mercy of somebody else. You know where I want to be, Jeff? Larry McReynolds in a Charlotte FS1 studio just <laughs> talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it's very stressful for these guys on the box today. Kyle Busch, William Byron, and Brad Keselowski. This is for third. So torn watching these cars go through that, you know, the inner loop that we've added here. I got to remember, we added that in 2019, the old way. I loved that opportunity for five wide craziness and getting into seven. It kind of took that away, but it also opened the door up for a carousel corner that's Whoa. so tricky. Somebody's off the racetrack right there. Just a little bit. <laughs> that was Chase Elliott kicking up all that dust. But it, it really did change, you know, the, the look of this race, but it's added a couple opportunities as well. Hey, Chase Elliott getting after it there. Close as it gets. <laughs> He's pushing it to the limit. Now you crest that corner, and that's the, the you get through the apex. You're looking for that curve. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Oh, I'm on the other side of it. Easy to do like that. Third place to Kyle Busch. Never, never count out Kyle Busch. And that's with a little bit of damage still in that right front fender or uh, headlight area. Brad K going after the 24 Byron. Ooh, he gets position as he comes over 3A. He's been quiet all day long, but been, uh, you know, putting some good lap times down. Seems like he's getting better and better as the race progresses. Right here with 43 to go, a factor. 43 laps to go, the stars are out in Sonoma. Guy Fietti, our uh, celebrity pace car driver. Michael Jordan, celebrity race team owner. Kyle Shanahan, celebrity grand marshal.
Sonoma, where they broke ground for this beautiful racetrack in 1968. Trans Am raced here in 69. And then NASCAR came to wine country. That's Larry Mack as the winning crew chief here. And Jeff Gordon in victory lane. And that's how you drink wine in Sonoma, right, Clint? No, actually, I, that goblet is what they call that. That one I have in my trophy case, but it's it's laying on its side because I broke the bottom off of it oh, that day. Wow. Yeah. I'm sure there's a story behind that well, one. Well, we may have had some of that red stuff. Well, congratulations <laughs> to 124 players that pending eligibility split Clint's $10,000. I got all six questions 124, right. 124, that's a good number. Heck yeah, what a good time that's been this year, watching our fans take on that stage two challenge, picking their picks and taking my money. Martin Truex taking fourth place and look who's right on his tail. Man, just hard to deny the speed of that five car. Up 15 positions since the restart. You know, but we talked to Martin Truex, you heard Right there. Hey, catching him is one thing. Getting around him is the other. Going to have to put some pressure on him. That's a three-time winner of this race. Gets around here well, knows where to be good and where not to. You know, you can give up on this racetrack. What you can't give up is getting off a six, getting off a ten. You know, high marks to the Ooh. three crew for Austin Dillon with battery changes. They're still on the lead lap. Yeah, the question is, will that battery last all yep. the way to the end? They're not going to have another caution necessarily that they can plan for in case, unless something does happen on track that brings it out. You can see Martin really pick it up as that five's gotten to his bumper. You can see the sense of urgency getting to Kurt. It's going to be important to try to get around him as fast as possible. Don't let them stack you up. Because okay. if you don't make that pass at the right time, the five's going to get you. This is where both of these guys are so good into the breaking zone. Nice block there by Truex to prevent that move from happening from the five behind him as he's working on Kurt Busch. Love you that. heard that forward bite right there. Thing is on the verge of breaking the tires loose. Got to treat that gas pedal like it's an egg underneath of it. It's really easy on the throttle. Got to set him up right here through nine, then in 10, not get too close, but get a run off this corner. Just like that, turn underneath him. And now outbreak into turn 11. Oh, look at five looking underneath whoa, the three man, wide. What a move here. Almost. Oh, so better close. It's the one thing I've been noticing about Martin, his braking. You know, the five's fast kind of everywhere. It just seems like he's got overall speed. Martin really focuses on getting into that corner. He can get in as deep as anybody. He didn't just slam the door on Larson. He knocked it right off its hinges. Well, what I saw there was that Martin felt like he had position on the one, really didn't think the five was going to make him take him three wide. So initial braking, he didn't get aggressive. But when the five dove in there, he was actually able to release that brake pedal, carry a little more speed in there to protect that line. Let's get up to second place and Kyle Busch, four seconds behind Chase Elliott, Jamie. Having a really solid day for this 18 team. Talk to his crew ch chief. You see him there on the right, Ben Bayshore. And he told me this season, it's just taken a while to figure out what Kyle Busch needs in his race car. He said after a few races, they went a different direction, and it has been showing. They have been firing off top five, top ten speeds every week, and once again today. And it's interesting. Kyle went around his older brother, Kurt Busch, and said, anything for Kurt. And then he said, Larson, good job. Anything for Kurt. So I don't know what he means by that, but he's certainly keeping an eye on his brother. Kyle Larson made a big move there under breaking, taking the line away and taking the spot for Martin Truex. Yeah, that's one of the biggest, longest breaking zones on the racetrack because of that speed you carry from the carousel up the drag strip. And I tell you, that was a power move by Kyle Larson. Going back to what you were saying, Clint, I didn't think that he could outbreak that 19 car and make that pass, but he did it. I, it's going to take strategy to keep that car from winning this race. They're so fast in every part of this racetrack. Here's another look at that pass that's coming out of the carousel and looking up toward turn seven. And it wasn't like he had position on him. You Whoa, saw you, yeah. Look how that's how aggressive Kyle Larson was. You saw the back tire slipping and slide as he was jumping on the brakes and downshifting. He earned it. <laughs> 
it's rough into that corner, guys, and, and that's what promotes some of that wheel hopping and, and very difficult conditions to get stopped in. So now, what does he do with Kyle Busch? And where? It won't take long, I can tell you right now. It's probably going to happen in the same place. He just made that pass on Mark Truex Jr. I mean, they're about a second faster than both, both Chase Elliott and Kyle Busch right now. It might be right there. You see the Oh, don't race get off too wide corner. here. Almost. He'll make He'll this be there easy. Heavy braking and downshifting, turn seven. Right there, what I just saw is what oh, I've seen oh, Chase please. Elliott, his teammate, do time and time again over the competition over the last few years. Now you see these other Hendrick cars having that same opportunity. Braking zones are how you win races on these road courses. 38 laps and one pit stop to go in Sonoma. With 36 laps to go in Sonoma, here are today's Credit One Bank ones to watch. Mike, when I came to Sonoma, it was all about coming home. Kyle Larson is at home. Elk Groves, California driver. Kyle Larson is trying to do something that's never been done here before at Sonoma, win both stages and the win and get his first win at Sonoma. Yeah, Jeff, Martin Trex Jr. is trying to score his third consecutive Sonoma win. He's done the first two by leading a ton of laps. I know he's not led today. A lot of that because of where he started in strategy. A lot's going to come down to who makes his final pit stop win. Loving what I'm seeing out of Kurt Busch today. Came in 83 points out of the playoffs. Needs a win. Needs a good run here for sure. Kurt Busch is definitely doing that today. Well, Kyle Busch is a two-time winner here, but guys, he just pitted and it wasn't strategy. It was a vibration. Check out that tire right there. Can he make his way back up? Will it be good enough? If my math is right, he's going to be about three laps short. Wow. Only two drivers in all of NASCAR history have more wins on a road course than Chase Elliott. You know them. Jeff Gordon, Tony Stewart. Elliott adds to that total today. And those are your Credit One Bank ones to watch. Larry, early pit stops? 
Mike, I was quite surprised because I still feel like right now we are still about a lap or two shy of the window opening. Now, I do believe when the window opening opens, you need to come in case a caution comes out. But I felt like a lot of those guys that pitted two or three laps ago, as Jamie Little pointed out, I think they're going to be a little, little short. Larry, I'm listening to your strategy, Colin, and I'm also watching over your shoulder these tires coming off those cars. That's the second tire I've seen looking pretty bad. I don't know if these things can make it right here. I think that was a right front off Christopher Bell's car. I've seen rear tires. I've seen front tires. Where is an issue? We knew that going in. This is designed that way. We need that kind of tire for this. Regan? Well, the 12 car Ryan Blaney pitted just then, and he had to also was not strategy. The tire looked exactly the same as the 22 car Joey Logano earlier. Another tire problem down here. Oh. That could be that untimely caution that nobody expects. Shake this race up in a big way. Man, look Boy, at that's, that thing. That's delamination right there, where that, you know, that softer compound is almost just separating from the main part of the carcass on that tire. You know, this place is so hard on these tires under heavy brake of it, also under acceleration. That load of those rear tires taken off can also do that. I wonder if that's a result of flat spotting that tire and the added heat from flat spotting it, perhaps well, causing it to delamination. Yeah, but we're heat seeing it sure. on rear tires too, Mike. Yep. I tell you what, right now, we're, I've never seen this before where strategy is usually so important. Track position, so important. Right now, it doesn't matter for the five car of Kyle Larson and Cliff Daniels. They got everything going right right now as he goes after the number nine of Chase Elliott for the lead here. Elliott chose track position. Larson chose tires. That's the difference between them right now. Tell you what, this is a battle that's not only heating up on this racetrack, it's going to heat up this season between these two teammates. We saw all four Hendrick drivers competing against one another at Dover last week at Charlotte. I tell you what, these guys are going to be battling a lot. Oh, almost a move right there by Kyle Larson getting into the carousel. That's what you do right there. How do you pass people? Get them looking in the mirror. All over the place you see Kyle looking. He's passed a lot of cars right here getting into seven, but I don't think he's close yeah, enough. Yeah, he lost a little bit there. Let's see how good he can get into the breaking zone here. Doesn't want to even try it. This was also the battle at Coda, and this is how they finished. Elliot Larson, when the rains came. When more rain came. When it rained really hard. <laughs> when we, launched, when, when we <laughs> launched the arc at Coda. Yeah, that's how they were running. Interesting if you can get close enough to him, Jeff, right here. You go down the hill and these S's get him set up. Turn 10, we've talked about it time and time again. Well, that's the thing about Sonoma. You only have to be good to prevent a pass. You only got to be good in certain parts of this racetrack, like right here. Be good in that right hand or turn 10, and you can make it very difficult to somebody to make that pass. Ooh, Larson thought about it. Oh, the nine. Oh. He, he kind of tried to get out of his mirror and he maybe overshot that corner a little bit. Boy, <laughs> you got to believe Trex is loving this right now. He's like, this might be my chance. You talked about the battle of these two. It's got to be hard. Hey, Chase Elliott, he came into Hendrick Motorsports and, and he won a championship, came into this season. He was still the guy. This five car is keeping him honest every week. <laughs> this is the only sport that I can think of where it comes down to teammates battling each other to win. Yeah, that teammate thing, that kind of goes out the window when they drop the green, Mike. <laughs> There's two different conversations right here, though. If you're Kyle Larson, you're trying to utilize those fresh tires to get around him while you can. Put the pressure on him. If you're Chase Elliott, you're trying to make him wear those tires out to where they'll equalize and you can stay ahead of him. He might be able to get it done right here. I, that's the there other section is. of this racetrack. Yeah, there he goes. He was. He getting, had to dive it in ooh, there. Yeah, he did. Look at this. Oh, it ain't over yet. Crossover at turn seven. All uh, right. I think oh, he got wow. him. But I was going to say, also coming out of that carousel, that turn six to seven, that's the other place you want to be really good to get that launch down that straightaway. And da -dum, da -dum. <laughs> here he comes. Yeah, those guys, Martin. not only were they battling it out, they were using up their stuff, brakes, tires, allowing mm -hmm. Mark Truex Jr. to close the gap. 33 laps to go in the Toyota Save Mark 350, and you'll see it all as we go Fox side by side.
How will Rey Mysterio respond? Mysterio respond after Roman Reigns' vicious attack on his son Dominic. Has the head of the table finally gone too far? It's an all-new Friday Night SmackDown, live at 8 Eastern, 7 Central on Fox. You saw Martin Truex get past Chase Elliott. That's for second place, and it splits up those Hendrick Camaros. Pit stops have begun. Ross Chastain has been on pit road. Daniel Suarez in and out. And, um, and the 11 of Hamlin. Now Ben Rhodes comes to the pit having a fine drive in his debut in the Cup Series. You know, Mike, especially if I'm the nine of Chase Elliott, I'm coming to pit road this time. There's going to be 30 to go. The last thing you want to do is keep running and a caution come out and there's people have pitted and you're still out there. I don't understand just continuing to run here. Chase Elliott looks, looked like he might have been headed for pit road and was then told to stay out. Chase Briscoe, you ride along with our Fox Visor cam inside the Ford Performance cam equipped, number 14. Pretty nice run here for Chase Briscoe. I think those laps he made in that race yesterday really paying off here. He's in the top 10. Yeah, this helmet visor right here, Cam, is so much fun to watch. Shows the elevation change. You go up bumps. this hill, how rough it is. A little curb what it, action. What it didn't show was Eric Almirola right on his tail. Oh, thank <laughs> goodness Stewart, he's had, I just, I just want this thing to end with those guys with a good finish. They have had such a tough year. You know, watching, oh, hey, he put a little dust in his face right there. So, Larry, could Chase Elliott and company be waiting to pit with Truex and Larson so they can all be on equal tires? Well, I wouldn't want to be on equal. I want to be on fresher tires. I want to I want to come before they come, Mike. And I mean, we're right there now where we've split this stage in half and I would just I would come this time. Okay. Well, I'm anxious to see them on even tires because yes. I got to say, I thought Chase Elliott hung on really good, holding off the five, holding off the 19 as long as he did on those older tires. So how good is this Napa Chevrolet on new tires? It's a good point. You're going to have to be as close as possible to him, even wise. If you get too separated, if you try to pit early and he stays out of three or four more laps, that's not enough. So right behind Chase, uh, that is the 77. That's Ben Rhodes. Remember, he just pitted for new tires. Right. And I'm telling you, that goes to show you just how much more grip there is with those new tires but right now the 19 and the five are starting to gap the the nine of Elliott. so even if to larry's point if they he waits and comes with them they're going to have a pretty good advantage on him just track position so he may need a caution to stay in the race so there's larson truex james davison i believe that was and then chase elliott Matty D on pit road for tires.
Tyler Reddick, another one of those guys putting another good. Never even seen this place, Mike. Never been. He, he was in the pace car this morning to try to see what this track is like. I'm sure he did a little bit of time on a simulator, but simulator just doesn't, you know, even out and, and, and give you the real true uh, elevation changes and braking zones like you see on ovals versus these road courses on the simulator. So great job to him putting another solid race together for Tyler Reddick. Well, Larry, I know you were all but screaming. I think Chase Elliott heard you. Well, I, I, they've got to come. They have to come. They don't want to be on equal tires. They want to get a lap or two leg up on. I don't know if that's going to be enough, but I'd rather do that than just be dead even with them. OK, and behind. There he comes. He's listening to you, Larry. Gee. <laughs> <laughs> so important. Watch him go around this thing, keeping a bunch of speed. Remember, that line right there is where you finally get down to pit road speed. A lot to be gained and lost as you're coming around turn 11 and pit road. Jamie. Alan Gustafson, his crew chief, off the pit box, assisting his pit crew, holding the tire, called his driver in, a four-tire stop. They're also going to make a track bar adjustment, go down. He's a little bit tight on the left. Really good pit box for this nine. It's a straight out. You can watch his speed. Last thing he wants to do here is speed at this point. Regan. Eric Jones quietly having a very good day in the 43 car. Every time we come to this racetrack, Eric Jones finds his way to the front. That race car right now lacking a little bit of overall grip. They've been doing small adjustments all day long in that car to try and make it a little better. Yeah, he'd been flirting around the top 10 for most of this race. You hear those guys complaining about turn. We heard Kyle Busch tell Jeff and I in the pre-race, man, I really want my car to turn good with the front end. As I'm watching those laps, and you cover in pit road of Kyle Larson, that car's pretty loose. Oh, he just wheel track, going in the carousel. This racetrack is a short track of road courses. When I think of running the road course, hey, Whoa, speaking of course, Bowman. stay on the course, <laughs> Bowman. But what I was getting at, Sonoma reminds me of a short track, right? Stop and go. Got to get in a corner hard. You got to slow this thing down a lot. And then you're creating a lot of speed from a 35 mile an hour corner right here. As you see Bowman in this seven, the acceleration up through the gearbox. Very difficult to get off here. Keep those tires underneath that. You need a car to turn. I'll tell you what, great lap right there by Mark Trix Jr. Gained almost a second on our leader. That last time was closing on him. He's to pit road first with fresher tires. It's going to give a leg up, I think, to the 19 car because because the five did not come to pit road that time. Jamie. Martin Trex Jr. told his team he's wheel hopping through the carousel, and that's the only place he feels like he's really getting beat. A four tire stop here at the 19 has been so solid. You saw the 48, they had just told him to pit. Then he went off road. He said his grip has been zero for the last couple of laps. <laughs> you saw that. <laughs> Alex Bowman in, Jamie. He's happy to get in and get some fresh rubber into the fourth pit stop for Alex Bowman. Most of these teams have one set of tires remaining if they need it with 27 laps here to go. They wipe the grill, make sure all that dirt is cleaned off at the 48. I tell you who else is struggling. I think Larson's struggling right now. I think he put a lot on these tires for that run and uh, he's going to have to get to pit road this time. And Jeff, the biggest reason he needs to come, we've had so many cars pit. If he stays out there and the caution comes out, I don't know if that's going to be enough laps to get back to the front because all these drivers that's pitted, they're going to be staying out. He'll have to pit. A moment ago, saw Denny Hamlin make a pass on Ryan Newman. He's since gone by Eric Jones, so Hamlin's worked his way back up to 17th, but still a ways to go to the front. Looking back from Denny at Eric Jones. And there comes and Larson. They come. So Kyle Larson will surrender the lead, likely to Joey Logano, who's just now in turn nine. I'm telling Mark you, Truex, by having those fresher tires a lap earlier is going to close that gap even more. See the track map in the upper right of where they are. Unless he had trouble on pit road or something else, I mean, honestly, he should assume the lead right here, the 19 of Truex. Regan? Well, immediately after the 19 pitted, Cliff Daniels got on the radio and told Kyle Larson next time by. That was their plan. Right now, his race car has been good. He has been absolutely silent on the radio. A nice, smooth stop's all he needs and a clean in and out from his pit stall. This may have That's been what it. he needed if you were the five. 
I don't think it. No, nah, he's going to yeah. get him right here. No, nah, he's going to get him for sure. Not what Kyle Larson wanted to see there. Oh, but that'll tighten things up. But a lot of traffic. He's going to have to get through, and that's going to help you stay close to him. But again, as he punches that hole, you got to go with him. You can't get mired back in traffic. And if you're going to pit again, I agree with Larry. You can't wait because if we get a caution, there's 33 cars on the lead lap. So the best you're going to restart is midfield under a caution and a pit stop. So Logano was last on pit road at lap 42, making his tires about 12 laps older than the cars chasing him. Remember, you, you got Chase Elliott that came in a little bit fresher tires. Then you got the 19, you know, and, and now you got the five on the, the, the freshest of these three. But I'm telling you, him staying out that extra lap, we're going to see how that plays out. There's the nine of Chase Elliott. A little bit of traffic he's going to have to deal with. Pretty heavy traffic here and good cars. Uh, for, he is in 12th. Chastain and Bell's tires are older than Elliott's. Otherwise, they're pretty much on par with the rest of that group. Laney to the pit lane there. Here are your Toyota top performers. Kyle Busch in second, Truex fifth, Bell in tenth, Hamlin 18th, and Wallace a lap down after uh, losing a tire. Regan. We'll just update the tires that came off of our leader Kyle Larson the inside edge of the left front tire down to the cords you see it right there on the camera probably a good part of the reason as to why he slowed up so much at the end of that run. Good point. Well I tell you what right now he is running some hard corners and laps on that five car so he's uh, he's going to need all the Goodyear rubber on that thing he could possibly have if he's going to get by Truex and be able to stay ahead of him to the end. Still a lot of racing left. 25 laps to go. I, I would believe that these guys need to save a little bit of that tire that you just saw Regan talking about. Can't just overdrive these things on the front side of these runs. Burn the tires right off. Tyler Reddick back on track after a pit stop. We'll take you Fox side by side. Twenty-four laps to go. Let's see where the Coca-Cola family of drivers are in the field. 
Uh, Joey Logano just got passed for the lead. Kenley Hamlin trying to fight back to the front. Mark Daniel Suarez right with him. Ryan Newman, Austin Dillon with battery issues. So Logano, after surrendering the lead, comes to Pitt Road. Now here's when Kyle Larson went after Mort, uh, Martin Truex. Well, we, we certainly saw as soon as Larson got out there, he was running really aggressive. And I believe his team has told him, hey, take care of those tires. <laughs> those things weren't looking great when we came off. Well, here's Kyle Larson and team discussing. Martin Truex just said on the radio he's going to run his pace and see where it ends up to be smart about that. Well, and Martin Truex Jr. knows what it's like to win here. He knows what it's like to be in position to take care of tires. So it's well, re I'm really curious about him running his own pace right now. Go back to that last run, though, and you said it. He closed the gap on him on the back side of that run. Kyle started to get wheel hop, like you said. He closed up a second on the last lap. Maybe that'll play into Martin's hand. Pretty smart race car driver right there. Not quite as fast on the short run, but maybe we can beat him on a long run here. Truex looks to the inside on Kurt Busch and will take over third place. Well, there's a lot of exhaust coming out of uh, the booth here today <laughs> and every Sunday on Fox. <laughs> Fortunately, we have the folks at Borla to handle the exhaust system, so Borla's going to crank it up for us. For the lead, Kyle Larson takes his Camaro back to the front against Kyle Busch. Making so, it look easy right now, Mike, but I, I just, I got to believe there's some nervous crew chiefs on top of that pit box trying, you know, looking at all these tires up and down pit road. There's the, the pass for the lead. Made it look easy by just driving in there aggressively. Boy, the brakes are just so strong on that five car today. Larson has set a blistering pace all day. With what we've seen of tire issues from some teams, is there a concern he's running this car too hard? And if so, what, uh, what do you tell him? Yes, there's a concern that the crew has been concerned about, told him his tires are beat up. They're beat up for a reason, because he's putting abuse on them, man. That thing is super <laughs> fast, making great speed. You talked about, we just saw him make that pass for the lead. I can't tell you how many passes he's made in seven over there, but all that getting off of the carousel in six, setting that, that pass up. Let me add to the concern. We went back racing at lap 44 after the end of stage two. That's when the five had pitted. They pitted at lap 64. That's 20 green flag laps. That stop they made, it's 26 laps until the checker flag. He's going to have to run six more green flag laps. Wow. Jamie? Well, when Larson went around Martin Truex Jr., he came on the radio and told the team, we're no good in the slower corners where we need the front end to work. That's when he's realizing maybe he's not as good as the five all over the track. And that's when he said, guys, I'm just going to run my pace here and see how it works out. In other words, I'm going to take care of my stuff and hope it works till the end. Well, it's interesting that you say that, Jamie, because what I've seen now as Kyle Larson has gotten the lead that last time by, within a tenth of a second of second place, Mark Truex Jr. So I think they're both going to be playing this cat and mouse game about pace and keeping those tires in good shape to the end. That's what this track's always been about. 
always been about saving tires, taking care of your equipment, those long runs. Whoa, Whoa it's a big miss Chase right there, Elliott. Chase. The other thing that's hard to do is manage your brakes. On these long runs, your tires wear out. Those big dive bombs you see getting into these corners, the seven passing zone, the 11 passing zone, those keep getting harder and harder and harder as you get temperature on these long runs in the brakes. So Larry, looking at the drivers that stopped on lap 54, 55, and I'm talking uh, Kyle Busch, Kurt Busch, Brad Keselowski, Christopher Bell, Kevin Harvick, William Byron among the top 10. Can they yeah, make it? Yeah, Mike, by looking at the fuel numbers I'm looking at right now, even with the pace slowing down, it looks like somewhere around three to five laps shy of making it to the end. Coming up Thursday, special edition of NASCAR Race Hub featuring the return of the better half dash virtually. This event features the women of NASCAR highlighting their contributions to the sport, allowing them to raise money for charity. Motor Racing Outreach be the participant and they'll have a virtual Legends car race at the virtual Texas Motor Speedway. Thursday night, 6 p.m. Eastern on FS1. Kelly Earnhardt Miller and uh, Bobby Labonte's wife are among the favorites. Will certainly be a lot safer. Some of those races have been <laughs> oh, wild over the years. I uh, wasn't it Wendy Venturini that flipped one a yep. few years back? I think I remember, was it Matt Kenseth's wife? I think them wives aren't the competitive. Oh, yeah, Look are. no further than that Caution. race. They'll show you. Caution. Oh, uh oh boy. And Brad Kozlowski was on pit road when the caution waved. Quinn Hauf has come to a halt. Well, I'm going to say something I hear Larry McReynolds say all the time. And Larry, please correct me if I'm wrong, but have these boys made their bed, <laughs> these guys that are up front now, or do they come in? You know, Jeff, we're going to have probably 16, 17 laps to go, and we do, are hearing that Brad Keselowski had made pit road, so he's good to go. I just think with, my gosh, Jeff, 32 cars on the lead lap, I just don't see how you can pit, if you're, especially if you're up there in the 5 and the 19 car. If you don't, you might get beat by somebody that does. Very tricky situation yeah. here. <laughs> I would not want to be a crew chief mm -hmm. today. I don't know, Jeff. 19 to go. I'd want tires. How about I, you? I, I would, especially when I've seen some of the trouble. But you know what? I, that's why I was never. I like Kyle Larson's attitude. I don't make that call. Tell me if to pit or not pit. I just drive. Here's the reason. Oh, it looks like the engine expired. And he tried to find a, a safe way off the track, but couldn't get fully out of harm's way. Yeah, but I see an oil trail underneath that car, too. There's a green light upper left that shows that the pit road was still open in the upper right there. Yeah, that's uh, a commitment line right there. Yep. So a legal stop and a big break for Brad Kay. I, I think that's going to pay dividends for him. I, you know, that's not necessarily, unless all these guys pit, that's not going to be the winning move, but that's definitely going to nope. gain in positions having those tires. Big break for them. You know who really gains on this caution? Us. Garrett Smithley. Because Garrett Smithley is kind of like Uncle Albert. He hasn't seen a bloody thing all day. There hasn't been another car near him the whole race. <laughs> He's now, the only one. He'll be up there with We're the We're going to as well. <laughs> caution is out. It just got really interesting in Sonoma.
Those pits have been a busy place today, and they're about to get busier. 18 laps to go. We're under caution. The impact of the pandemic on youth sports has been significant. Recovery has started in some communities, but kids most in need are still on the sideline. Sidelines. Learn how you can help Fox Sports and Good Sports restore play for at-risk youth and the programs that serve them through donations of brand new sporting equipment. Visit goodsports.org to learn more. When the caution came out, Brad Keselowski was on pit road. That was judged a legal stop. However, they had equipment over the wall too soon for the number two. So he will restart in the back after they serve their first pit road penalty of this season. Who comes in? Who stays oh, out? Oh, oh, oh. Wow. And no mistakes. Money stop. Looks like they're all coming. 32 lead lap cars. Cody Ware gets the free pass. We'll restart then with 33. A couple on the back stay out, and they may be lapped cars. Jamie. Yeah, the 19, James Small said, yes, we have to pit. Let's bring it in. No adjustments all day for the 19. Just air pressure. You see Kyle Busch in as well with a wedge adjustment to help that race car. He needs a little bit of la lateral grip. Good stop here all day long, actually, for the 19. But they said they had to come. Good call, because everybody else did as well, Regan. The pit call for Kyle Larson was Silver Dollar. That meant come down pit road. His race car continues to be good. He hasn't said a word about it on the radio. The only thing he has asked for is a drink bottle during this pit stop. So several stayed out. Here's Larson spinning the tires, and he gets out in front of Martin Truex, Chase Elliott, and the rest. So Joey Logano, who just came in a lap 67, stayed out. Brad Kay uh, stays out. But uh, Tyler Reddick, Corey LaJoy, Anthony Alfredo do not pit. So it's about, what's that, two, maybe three green flag laps on the tires of the 22 of Joey Logano. Dang it, look at Keselowski, though. The that opportunity been, that there is right in their move. lap. That mistake will be costly. That'll cost them a lot of positions. They're going to look back on this and really be bummed out. Long yeah, way Jeff, home from here. Logano has four laps on his tires. Reddick and LaJoy, they have about six laps on theirs. Mm. So with Cody Ware taking the free pass, we will restart with 33 lead lap cars. When I come to Sonoma, at least when I'm up here in the booth, Mike, <laughs> this is the way I want to see this race play out. Wow. You just hope for that late caution and, and to line them up with some guys alternating up their, their strategy, maybe have a few more laps on their tires, and then those guys a little further back with new tires. Oh, yeah. But if I'm Kyle Larson and I've been dominating this race, I'm out front, have track position, those cautions are not what you want to see. I have to get around these cars, got to keep these cars protected. Restarts at this point in the juncture are going to be wild. You know they are. So Larson, Elliott, Truex, they will start six, seven, and eight. They will be the first cars on new tires on the outside of row three and then all of row four and back. Well, no, and the one thing here, this puts Larson in that sixth position, that puts him on that outside lane on the restart. So what that means is the first turn, which is turn one, not much of a turn, but that's a disadvantage when you're on that outside. But as you come to the next one, now you've got the preferred line. But I've seen that, that lane that's, you know, now when he goes to the right, the lane on the left side actually has the momentum off that corner. So this might open up the door for Truex. Yes. I tell no. you, it put him there. You know where it put us? On our feet. This is so exciting. <laughs> this is what I was hoping for. One of those drivers had little choice, and he's going to restart on the front row. Tyler Reddick did not pit because they are out of new tires. Oh. Well, now, see, I'm, I'm seeing here. Okay, so so I kind of, I thought that Larson, okay, so, yeah, Larson's six. I don't understand why he's in that position because. No, he's right? six, because the five in front of him did not stop. Oh, so okay. he restarts sixth. Yeah, I know that, yep. but I thought the he was going to be The scoring monitor hadn't reset. Keselowski has to drop to the rear. Oh, that's what it is. That's okay, it. so Thank he's you, actually fifth right now. And that's, so now I, I flip flop that what I just said right. and put Truex in that position. In the better spot. No, Going no, to two? No, no, I okay. want to be in the, yep. where, where Larson's at. All right, we'll see. Because they will come to 16 laps to go and take the green flag.
clean getaway for Logano. And that's exactly what I was worried about. You see how Truex got held up behind Anthony Alfredo. Yeah, we got to be careful not get held up in the next corner. That's what's so cool about these switchbacks on road courses. Not only you're good in one corner. Whoa. Oh wait, get to the next one. You're not so good. So now Chase Elliott now gained Bush another position it. on Truex. About the day Corey LaJoy is having. Great to see him up front. He's done a great job today. Out of the carousel, headed for turn seven. Well, he did exactly what he needed to do. He wanted to get through those, the, the traffic on uh, uh, without tires as before the other guys did. So far, so good for the five of Kyle Larson. Tell you what, that just did not work out good for the 19 of Truex, Truex. at all. because now he's going to come down this hill through the S's and he's got Alfredo and the joy on older tires. And he's got to try to navigate. He'll get one, at least one of them in turn 11 in the braking zone. Might have to get a little closer than this to do it. And they're side by side. Yeah. Not going to happen as Larson goes to second. And Truex is bottled up. Now he gets some drive off the bottom of turn 11 and he'll get LaJoy. Lined up on Alfredo, but they're single file up the hill. How about Alfredo? Here's a fellow who's never run a full season in anyone in NASCAR's top three divisions, but man, he likes road course races, doesn't he? He, he does, and he's being really aggressive, looking to slide that car up over the curb, doing a nice job here, holding off some guys on much fresher tires. Really see Martin being aggressive now. He's pushing him. If you heard him talk on the radio, we're just going to ride, pace ourselves. That all went out the window when the caution came out. He now, we got to point out Alfredo. He must have come to pit road the exact same time as the two of Brad Keselowski and made it on to pit road at that same time. But he didn't have the penalty. For the lead. Kyle Larson on fresh tires. Takes Logano. Chase Elliott comes to third against Tyler Reddick. Truex did get Alfredo. But he's got a ways to make up with 15 laps to go. Plenty of time, but uh, Martin Truex getting jammed up on this restart. We'll show it to you again. To Jeff's point, that really was a problem. Well, well you had the leader who is Logano Right, was able to just kind of get a bit of a jump. That allows Ooh. that inside lane to go. And, and Truex, you know, he just saw what was happening. He saw not only the five go by him, but also the nine. Oh, we got an issue here with Alex Bowman. And Corey oh, LaJoy is turned Joyce around at turn 11. Dang it. Caution waves. Oh, big damage here to Kevin Harvick's hood. Both ends of his car. Right front and the left rear. Heavy braking, turn 11. LaJoy. Eeks. Oh, it looks Smithley. like the 42 of Chastain maybe got into the tires or I, I didn't see what. Oh, I see. He checked up because it, it happened ahead of that picture. Yeah. And man, William Byron's front end is really messed up right there. Just up there with Chastain. I think he got in a LaJoy. And how many like times this? have we seen stuff like this happen down in turn 11? All right, now watch the seven. It'll be a white car coming into frame oh, on the outside, and Chastain tries the dive bomb. Yeah, that and this doesn't is a, go well. Seven of LaJoy, you know, he kind of got the car slowed down and was going to make sure he made that apex, but. You know, when you that's the thing when you're on older tires versus these guys are newer tires, they're going to be aggressive and you got to not only see what's in front of you, you got to see what's coming behind you. And it's just it's just aggressive, hard racing at this late stage in the race is what that is. Oh. 
You know, I've been watching Kevin Harvick all day. He was just putting one of those clean Kevin Harvick race days together, just staying out of trouble, didn't feel like he had a car that could win, just, you know, getting as many stage points and getting a good finish, and then that happens. Doing what he does best, just yeah. taking care of business. You were right, and I was. you took the words right out of my mouth. It's kind of having a quiet day. But just staying right there in, in the thick of things, and, and all it takes is one little thing. Wipes not only him, William Byron, a lot of good cars out right there. Bubba Wallace gets the free pass, so he'll get back on the lead lap. Pit road is open with now 14 laps to go. Probably about uh, 12 to go. We'll see a restart. See Bubba Wallace getting his lap back. Yep. And that's going to be a shot in the arm for those guys. You know, there's a lot of cars right there that they can surpass with all that damage. Getting that opportunity late in the race like this, that was one that they didn't yep. get because of the timing of that, that tire. Harvick will pit for uh, crash damage. And with 14 to go and Kyle Larson leading the Toyota Save Mart 350. We'll take you Fox side by side. They'll do anything because. Thirteen to go. Heavy damage to Kevin Harvick in that one and to William Byron. In his day. And this all started when uh, Corey LaJoy left the inside open coming into the corner just a little bit. Ross Chastain in the green 42 right there thought it would be enough. Tell you wasn't. what he did do, though. He spun around backwards here, grabbed him a gear, Jeff, <laughs> and shot up through the infield Not just and passed a gear. lot of cars. So I, I don't know what NASCAR's take will be on that. Was that uh, – did he gain spots? Who would have ever thought did the guy that caused spots? the caution? Yeah, he gained But spots. who would have thought the guy that caused the caution was backwards at one point on the racetrack would have gained spots? If he'd have just gone to the left and blended in a little sooner, I they can might tell not you even this. be looking at this. You can do that a, a hundred times over, and 99 of them, you are not going to gain spots <laughs> when you're backwards on the racetrack. All right, William Byron with heavy damage in that crash. Jamie. Yes, that was the big one of the race, William. You just saw the replay for the first time. What did you see from the driver's seat? Yeah, I was uh, I was trying to roll to the outside of the 43, and uh, the four was in front of me, and I thought he was going to run the bottom, and obviously somebody spun in front of him and caused a big pile up. And at that point, you're just a passenger. You know, you're obviously going to knock the radiator in and and uh, be done for the day. So it stinks, but we're we're struggling all day to be honest. So we we got to go back to work on that. But uh, definitely learned some lessons. 
lessons. Thanks to Exalta, uh, the Chevrolet, and everyone. And um, yeah, we'll regroup. We'll, uh, first really bad week of the year, so we'll, we'll regroup from it. First DNF of the season for William Byron, but he still says it and walks away with a smile on his face. So he will join Ricky Stenhouse and Quinn Half in the garage. We have double checked with NASCAR on the 42. He did it all right. <laughs> and they said Ross Chastain after spinning came back out on track and he's OK. So next weekend the Westminster Dog Show is on Fox on Saturday the Masters Agility Championship beginning at 5 Eastern then Sunday at 7 best in show. You'll catch it all on Fox and the Fox Sports app. We're going to the dogs boys. <laughs> no, cool. Chris Myers. Was pretty sure he'd be working that. No. Oh, pretty sure the dogs are only probably the ones that have more grooming done than him when he does that <laughs> show. Oh. <laughs> He'll go through a gallon of hairspray every pre-race. I love him. <laughs> 425 wineries in Sonoma County. One racetrack. Can't say enough well, about numbers work for I me. No, there's a racetrack and a winery. I can't that you say. You might not know about. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Old David Abreu. All right, 12 laps to go. Let's recap the day for you. Kyle Larson started on pole, jumped out to an early lead. Martin Truex started deep in the field and was on the move early. A lot of different pit strategy. Working the race forward or backward. Trying to get on a winning cycle. Whatever that would be, of course, cautions would pretty much dictate what would happen. Teammates 12 and 21, not exactly happy campers there. Ditto 18 and 20. Ricky Stenhouse Ooh. into the wall after a cut tire. Came back out on track, ran a few laps, finally put it in the garage. And Kyle Larson won both stages today. And then the big one. Corey LaJoy left the door open just a little bit for Ross Chastain and around they go. Hard hit for William Byron there. Yeah, well, it's just, I mean, he was doing everything right there. And like you said, can't anticipate them checking up like that right in front of you. Lands right in your lap. Larson Legato, Elliot Reddick, Truex Alfredo. The Bush brothers, Chastain and Jones are the top 10. Green flag with 11 to go. Good jump by Joey on the outside. That's something we haven't really seen today. He'll hold tough. In position yeah, right here. Great position, but the momentum's going to be on this outside. Now they go into the left hander. No, he doesn't have position. <laughs> yeah. No. Now he does have position. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, tight through four. Martin Truex right all over the bumper of Chase Elliott. Yeah, and then that opened up the door for Tyler Reddick through this right hander. Up and over and into the carousel. I'm going to be curious if Chase Elliott can get by the 22 of Joey Logano here and what he may have after Kyle Larson. We, we've not seen anybody to have that short run pace. If Tyler Reddick can hold on to a top five here, you can't say enough about that drive out of him and his team. Never been here before. That is pretty impressive. Entry to seven, double wide from about fifth on back. Now it sorts out a little in the S's. Chastain hanging tough. Too wide all the way through the S's. I know those tires are hurt. Yep. <laughs> and gains a couple of spots doing it. I was curious also to watch Kyle Busch right now in that fifth position. Had some big damage to the left front fender. He was able to sort of weave that car back and forth as we see Chase Elliott now going after Joey Logano for second place. And behind them, top ten spots. Everybody double wide. This is what I love about Joey Logano. 
Man, I'll tell you what, that guy's a fighter. He gets aggressive at the end of these races, especially on these restarts. Ten to go. Woo! Cool shot right there. Blaney and Custer side by side, fighting hard for 18th. Christopher Bell battling Reddick. This is for ninth. Daniel Suarez up to 11th. Eric nice Jones job. to 12th. Man, what a great move Look right there. Late break for Suarez to get to that inside. Tough crowd here. Ooh. Oh, I see Michael McDowell trying to squeeze Alex Bowman. Look at the day that, that McDowell's had. That right side of that car is almost gone. That, that's the cars you see in the, in the back of the Oh, <laughs> got into him a little bit. Going to get him again here. <laughs> I can tell you what, that's going to make Michael McDowell a little angry as they yep. go down into this braking zone. You're not going to outbreak Michael McDowell. Very <laughs> accomplished road racer. McDowell has, he's got the line there. And here comes Hamlin to battle Bowman. Through See the S's. That, that damage to the right front fender of Alex Bowman. Heard him short shift right there in that section. That's definitely an option. You either do it there, Jeff, or you have to do it up over the hill, yeah, which is right very hard in the to middle do. Yeah. Of that, that, you know, you're sliding the back of that car, as we see here. Wheel spin. For third place. Yeah, that car is sliding out, and then you've got to go, you know, over to third, which is an awkward shift. Well, the, your G-forces are pulling you to the left side of your car. You reach over. Very hard shift to make second to third. Most of the track is paved. However, sometimes... It's James Davison. I can Ooh. tell you, there's not enough of it that's paved, Mike, because this is one narrow. I'll road tell course, you. Now, they don't dry. teach you how to do that at Skip Barber Racing School. <laughs> I promise you. They got a great curriculum. This is not part of it. Sorry, James. You might be able to get away with that in that 66 Mustang that you were driving. <laughs> you can't do it in these babies. Uh, we keep it on the pavement. Well, guys, I, I, I hate to say this, but uh, Kyle Larson just had his fastest lap of the race that last time by. He's not holding back on these Goodyear tires right now. You knew it was going to come down to these three cars. Chase Elliott, the domination he's had on road races. As of late, the domination of Kyle Larson and his team. And then Martin Truex, three-time winner out here in Sonoma. I don't wonder, but what we're seeing the championship four up front right here. Very well, well could be. Well, and, and so, you know, my pick was these three that are one, two, three, and, and I was between Logano and Kyle Busch. So you could, you could yep. kind of flip flop those guys, and I agree. I think that could be your top four that go to Phoenix to battle it out for the championship. A lot of racing left, though. Oh, yeah. A lot can change. A lot of guys can gain. It'll be eight to go at the line here. Keslowski working his way back up through after serving that penalty up to 23rd. But man, it's hard fought back there. Last lap, Larson two tenths of a second faster. He backed way Elliott. down. I think yeah, his yeah. crew chief got on the radio and said, hey, we don't need to go that fast. I appreciate you showing me how fast it can go. This really shows the elevation, that camera angle there. This is, it's hard to, a lot of blind corners, and, and it's at a blind spot and a bad spot. You come up over the corner, you keep looking for that exit. Where is it, where is it? Oh, there it is. <laughs> Contact Hamlin and Bowman get together. Turn 11. Turns in. Oh, that's some, somebody. Uh, that was Eric Amarillo. He got into the back of the 11. Yeah, he got into the but the 48 way. missed a little bit, I think. Well, he's trying to make that late apex. Oh, oh no, he they got up into, a little yeah. bit. Oh, Is that Alfredo? It was McDowell and somebody on the outside getting together that caused that dust up. Accordion in that corners. <laughs> These cars are starting to look. It might have been Eric Jones. Oh, yeah, there's no all that give and take. That's completely out the window right now. <laughs> no, it's all take. Yes. It's gimme, gimme, gimme. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. 
I'll tell you, from Reddick on back, there's just like a freight train of cars, and they're all within a car length of each other. But that's got to be so frustrating to be able to get that close and not close enough to pass. Well, that's why I say it's it's not. You can be super fast in sections and make up speed overall in a lap, but you still can't pass somebody. You've got to find the right places as we see this ninth place battle between Christopher Bell and Anthony Alfredo. And be good in those places. Yeah, so off of six, right mm -hmm. through the carousel to get that run up to that breaking zone in seven, and off of 10, that fast right-hander, or maybe just down the hill to 10 to get that run to turn 11 breaking zone. In the example of that, almost every single shot that we've seen Kyle Larson pass cars, it was that set up off of six into seven, how he got it done. Blaney with a try there. Well, you got to wait so long through this carousel <laughs> to pick up the throttle. You want to really get it pointed as straight as you can at the very, very exit of that corner to get this run to turn uh, turn seven. And then, boy, you really got to get those revs up on the on the rev match on that downshift. He sir, he, he short shifted right there, also going into the S's. going to use our Fox Ghost car to show you turn seven and how differently Kyle Larson and Chase Elliott approach one of the slowest corners here. So this is that turn I was talking about that late exit off the carousel down the basically the drag strip. Let's see what happens in this braking zone. Whoa, man. But over the years when I was racing Chase Elliott, that's where his dominance has been and under braking. Now you've got a guy equal equipment, figured that out, put it to good use here. Six laps to go, three seconds the margin. Surprise, Ross Chastain. I mean, that car spun out, grabbed in gears, spun back up through the infield, may have passed a couple cars, but nonetheless, <laughs> spun out and staying tough right here on those old tires. Pretty impressive. I would have thought those things would have been smoked. And got pretty fortunate on the damage. Like, he got hit right in the right spot where it maybe even helped him. I think it propped that deck lid up a little bit. Larry? You know, guys, it has been a dismal year for Chip Ganassi Racing. You're riding with Kurt Busch right here in the one car. Started back in the 30th position inside the top 10. He has not had a top 13 finish since going all the way back to Homestead 12 races ago. And right now, Chastain in sixth in the 42, Kurt Busch in seventh. And uh, Jamie, how about more on Ross Chastain? Yeah, he hasn't said anything about that race car. He has just been eyes forward, focused. And I talked to Ross about this team and this year being his rookie year. And he said, Kurt Busch gets so much credit. He helps so much and he sets the bar for me exceptionally high. But guys, he had his best career finish at Coda fourth on a road course. And we've got a car off track. And that would be Cody Ware, who has brought out the caution with five laps to go. Uh, Ryan Priest also involved. They were not, yes, they were on the same lap. That this was four is positions. This shake things oh, up. Oh, boy, oh, boy. Not what our leader, Kyle Larson, wanted to see. But what that man, Alan Gustafson, in that nine of Chase Elliott maybe wanted to see. I don't think he wanted to see it either. <laughs> look at the top of the screen and look for Ryan Priest and the purple car of Cody Ware. Uh, probably trying to run side by side through these. Uh, no, I think he did. He just lose it. I don't know where Cody Ware came in. I saw Matty D was really well, close. To oh, him. he oh, he pulled oh, right out in front of him. Right wow. There. Oh, boy. That was one of those days of thunder moments well, right it's a there. Dust cloud. Yeah. That was that time and you don't want to head for the smoke. I'd like to go back and see that replay again. The 20, 21, I thought, was right on the back bumper of Priest when he got loose. Yeah, that's what I'm curious is how Ryan Priest lost, you know, traction in the rear and the car came around. I 
don't. Well, I don't know if De Benedetto was close enough. I don't. Well, the so. front end looks like it was. <laughs> yeah, but, it, but the, damage, the damage is on his I'll right help side. you out, Mike. He might have got him with the left Then Unless left that happened earlier in the race, I will stand corrected. But that looked like a little assistance. That hey. was a lot of assistance. So. Nah, man. Talk about assistance. Larry, well, I need some assistance. Are we pitting? What are we going to do? How are you going to win this race for me? Because it could be out of my hands. We've already packed the pit equipment up. Yeah, it's already you. in the hauler, Clint. <laughs> Well, how about the opportunity? I guess you're going to have to see who's got tires. Yeah, about everybody has tires, except as Jamie Little reported, uh, Tyler Reddick in that eight car. Of course, he's falling all the way back to 16. Most everybody else has a set of tires, but we're going to go back racing probably with what? Two or three to go. And you can see right there, the right front was broke. That suspension was broken. Oh. He had no control of that right front tire after he made contact with Priest once he came out on track in front of him. Yeah, I'd sure like to hear from Ryan if he got turned. I mean, that damage on the left rear was from Cody Ware, the secondary collision. Got a tire up against yeah. the wall right there. But you got to think about it. How many laps you're going to have when we go back green here? It's yeah. only going to be a couple laps. No takers. We've made our bed, boys. A couple in the back came in. Probably those with damage, like priests. Five laps to go as they go ground pounding in Sonoma. We're going to restart with three to go. James Davison gets the free pass back on the lead lap. Jamie, only five drivers pitted under this caution. Why? Yeah, that's because they're out of tires. Six sets and they are done, but every team has to glue up one of the sets they already used. These came off of Chase Elliott's car earlier on. 11 laps of green flag running. You are not coming down pit road to take this. But if you have an emergency, you blow out a tire, this is what you're getting. Wow. So Kozlowski, Newman, Reddick, Davison, and Priest all pitted. Now these guys must clean these tires up. You see them swerving them up. It is paramount to get these cleaned up. That's exactly what Jamie just showed you. That's how much buildup hot tires will pick up on this racetrack under caution. 
Get them cleaned up, boys. Hard to get those fronts cleaned up, too. We will restart with three to go. And look at this front row, Larson and Elliott. Truex and Logano. Kyle Busch, Ross Chastain, Kurt Busch, Daniel Suarez, Bell and Alfredo, the top ten. It's going to take some aggression. I don't know if it's going to come out of a teammate, but that's what it's going to take to beat that car. But also that's experience of the five of Kyle Larson being in that position, that inside lane, being able to restart this race several times today from that position and knowing what's going to happen in turn one and two. See Kyle Busch getting the inside. Logano got into him a little bit, didn't get him past. Sixth oh. place a doubt and Alfredo is around. Bad place. Woo, woo, woo. Easy, boys. Hope he can refire and get going. No, caution oh, is caution out. Caution is out. <laughs> caution breeze. That'll make caution, you nervous, right? won't it? Eighth caution of the day for Anthony Alfredo's spin. Well, let's see how much help he might have had. White car with a black roof, McDowell, the yellow car alongside. Oh, man, they're just all yep. checking up, and Alex Bowman made some contact. Then the 20 goes around. 20's got a lot of contact. He got straightened up. So Went Bell was the first to spin, and. Well, I think he had some help from Alfredo after this contact. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Actually, it was Bowman that sent Alfredo into Christopher exactly, Bell. Yeah. I, I, I don't think we can express how crazy these restarts are on these left and right switchbacks on these road courses. It gets nuts out there. Well, let's try it from the visor cam. Oh. <laughs> it ain't over yet. <laughs> Am Amarola's teammate was out there throwing up some dust. So now we will go to overtime. Mm. And Alex Bowman's cars really tore up. Couldn't tell if he got pushed into those cars. I was going to say, what car's, a clue. Not, what car's not torn up? <laughs> First three, that's about it. <laughs> yeah, because you go back to fifth place, Kyle Busch, that one's torn up. Here's oh. Al Oh, man, come on. Well, this is the final NASCAR Cup point race on the Fox family of networks, but we're not done. Just wait till next week. They went for a million bucks, that's the lid. Get that pot of gold. Let's go get it. Star-studded at night begins at 5 Eastern on FS1. And somebody's going to win a million dollars. Sammy Hagar will be there, the side deal, and will be there to bring you the final NASCAR on Fox presentation for 2021. Think Fans about that. Fans coming back to the tracks. Things are pick This is picking up. Oh, man, think about that, right? All-star race, no points on the line, and a million dollars to win it. Only driver in the top five without a restart uh, on the restart without a road course win is Kyle Larson. Yeah, he was also the guy that never won a race after leading 200 laps or more till last week. Is got it if he won what two or more stages well, and never won a race till last week. He's, he's, he's starting to change a lot of those yes, stats. He's going to have to continue to keep Chase Elliott guessing on these restarts. He got a great jump that last time, but you know Chase Elliott's going to put that in the bank. Going to be better on this one. It's going to take aggression. If they're side by side coming up the hill. This is, isn't over by any stretch of the imagination. So Elliott, Truex, Logano, and Kyle Busch, the four drivers behind Kyle Larson, between them have 15 road course wins in total. Kyle Larson has been in the front all day long. Can he stay there? 
I think he does. I mean, he's been so strong. That car is just great in all the right areas and he's been really good on on the restarts but I, i'm gonna tell you what we saw mark Truex jr was pushing him when they came to that green trying to get position on chase elliott in second place didn't work out that time but i both think i think both chase elliott and Martin Truex Jr. are going to get more aggressive on this restart. Well, I think my answer to that, Mike, is kind of twofold. Yes, it's his teammate Chase Elliott, which is what I want, right? I want my teammate beside me because I know he's going to give me room. He's going to race me clean. That being said, Chase Elliott's used to being the man on these racetracks. He's going to wow. be aggressive. He doesn't – hey, it's all about being a teammate and everything else, but you want to be number one guy at that camp. Here's a look at Chase Elliott on NASCAR Cup road courses. He's won them all except Sonoma. Well, and that's another layer to this story. A little added motivation for Chase Elliott to get that first Sonoma win. And if Hendrick Motorsports finishes 1-2 today, they will tie a NASCAR record that has stood since 1956. Carl Kiefer's team. Those Chrysler 300s were 1-2, four races in a row. Hendrick's done it the last three races. They're in positions one and two right now. Looking through this running order, I see Daniel Suarez down there, 99, running in the top 10 again. They've been strong on, on tracks that you wouldn't think a fresh team like that would be strong on. Dirt races, on these road courses. These are hard places to get a hold of. Doing a good job. So, Kyle Larson, what's it like racing for the win against the drivers who are your teammates? It's a good problem to have when you're battling your teammates for wins. Other teams maybe get competitive within within their walls, and um, a lot of times that can be good, but I would say more often than not, that's a, a bad way to go about you know, being a teammate. We all want to see each other do good for the organization and for Mr. H. Well, as we said last week, Rick Hendrick says this is not a four car team. This is one team with four cars. Yeah, but they're still competitors, Mike. Of course. And at the end of the day, when you're a competitor, you want to be the top dog. You want to be in the winner's circle, especially when you're in a position to be able to do that. But you also got to know how to race your teammates so that it does not become an internal issue. You want to be you want friendly rivalries within your race team to make you be better, but you don't want to tear up one another's race. Cars. There's that damage on Christopher Bell. I told you that thing had a lot of damage on the yeah, right front. Sure but the did. other thing is going to that point. Both of those guys have chin straps on them helmets. When we have that chin strap on, we lose our mind. <laughs> <laughs> you must have had yours a little too tight a few times. I think I, I can think of one or tw once or twice. I had mine a little too tight. Hey, it's a fact. <laughs> You know, final postscript on uh, the Coke 6 Center Memorial Day. And an image that I just can't get out of my mind is a little video that a fan posted after the race. B.J. McLeod had just raced 600 miles, and there he is signing tires for a group of Marines, talking with them, chatting them up, and just, gosh, what Memorial Day is all about. I mean, good on you. If I'd raced 600 miles, I'd be somewhere getting IV fluids. I can <laughs> promise you that. But, uh, you know, there he was, working with a group of servicemen who came to enjoy the race. and. We were glad they were there. Well, the presentation that Charlotte Motor Speedway does, the job that you do, Mike, within our broadcast, um, man, it, it is just so great to have that, that remembrance of how important that day is and how thankful you are to be able to race in such a great country. We all get to play a part. Thank goodness. There they are. Some here this weekend as well. Yep. U.S. Air Force. Yep. Man, I tell you what, there was a show before this event Guys flying, I don't know if that was the Air Force, but wow, it was amazing. I guess former yeah. Navy and Air Force pilots putting on a show here for these fans here in Sonoma. Today, remembered across Europe and across the world is D-Day. And here we go for NASCAR overtime. Two laps, green, white checker. Leader takes the white flag under green. Next flag ends the race and it's credit one overtime. Can't spin your tires here, Jeff. And you can't lock up those brakes in turn two. Boy, Larson with a whole car length. Sure did. 
Whoa, Chase Elliott got a little loose. These guys are getting after it. Love it. Guys all over the curbs, just trying to get a little bit more turn in the front. Chase is putting Ooh, the pressure I'll on. Tell you him. what, right there, Larson got wide. Heavy braking zone ahead. Well, we've not seen anybody be able to outbreak Larson today, but I tell you what, right there, Chase Elliott did he a great a job bit. closing the gap. Get, get him in the mirror. That's what he's done. Put the pressure on him in the mirror, looking back there, not paying attention. You can wheel hop very easy. This is, this is that section where you start to get those tires cleaned up. Yep. Through turn nine, down to 10, fastest part of the course. And the important part, we we haven't said it, I know we've said it a lot, but that's a prime example. He needed to get some distance on him because you know the next opportunity is this turn 11. And Chase really dove it in hard and slid up in the center. Now what the nine has to do, he's got to watch that five trying to be aggressive. As soon as he makes a mistake, that's when you got to pounce. And you got to get, you got to close that gap. You got to make Kyle Larson not think about the next corner, the next shift, but think about Chase Elliott. I think Kyle Larson did a great job that opening lap. You could see he was pushing his slip and slide around, just trying not to overdrive it. And that allowed Chase Elliott to stay right there. Now he's starting to settle in. What can Chase Elliott do with that? That's the hardest part. Don't let him force you into it. You know, continue to keep the poise. And it's so challenging to do when somebody's breathing down your neck. Don't make a mistake and beat yourself. And you still got two major breaking zones. Here's one into seven. Don't wheel hop. But you got one last one into 11. If Chase Elliott puts, puts a little pressure down through these S's, will the five of Larson wheel hop into that breaking zone in turn 11? Remember five years ago, Denny Hamlin, Tony Stewart, just that same kind of battle down into 11 on the final corner of the race. He's but just, Chase has got to get closer to have a shot. So strong in this fast part of the track right here. I just don't think he does. Turn 11, the final breaking zone. And Rick Hendrick's team's going to tie a record that stood since 1956. One, two finishes, four races in a row as Kyle Larson wins at Sonoma. And he's excited about it. You see him go sideways there as he crossed the line. Thank you guys so much. A lot of local fans here cheering on the local boy. Get out the broom, fellas. Kyle Larson just swept the day. Two stage wins and victory. I believe that's two weeks in a row. At his home track, the 28-year-old from Elk Grove, California, gets his ninth career win, third of the season. And there was action back in the pack in that final corner. Quite a bit, in fact. I'd be let down if there wasn't, Mike. Mm -hmm. Classic turn 11 here. Look at everybody driving in. Oh. Super deep into that braking zone, and the 99 of Suarez sends McDowell around. Man, what a let down for McDowell to get dumped oh, like that in the last corner. And then Newman got dumped too, coming off the corner. Score is settled, perhaps. More to come, I believe. We might see some more scores <laughs> settled down here on Pitt Road. So Larson leads a Hendrick Chevy 1-2. Truex's Toyota third, Logano's Mustang fourth. And Kyle Busch rounds out the top five for Joe Gibbs Racing. Kurt Busch and teammate Anthony Chastain, sixth and seventh. Hamlin, eighth, hardly saw Denny all day. Alex Bowman, ninth after an earlier skirmish. And Ryan Blaney comes out of here, tenth.
for Hendrick Motorsports now 270 wins. Seventh this season and their seventh here at Sonoma. Man what a roll they are on right now. <laughs> hey this guy likes to dirt track it. Must have some friends and fans down there at turn 11. <laughs> Got a lot of fans here yep. in this part of the country, and he so, just gained a bunch more. So what is the significance of Kyle Larson defeating NASCAR's current road race king, Chase Elliott, on the road course? Yeah, you, you know, you talk about these guys sharing information. <laughs> yeah. How long does that last? That's a good student. So he sets a couple of career firsts last week his first career win over 400 miles and this week first road course win here at Sonoma. I tell you what that guy right there that we just showed Chase Elliott he kept him honest man he pushed yeah. him hard that last lap or two those last couple restarts. Sure did but you just weren't going to keep that car back I mean it was lights out from lap one really definitely the fastest car. All day long. So instead of at start finish, Kyle brings his car past the start finish line, stops in front of his pit stall so his team can celebrate with him. And great job to Cliff Daniels also. We, we were questioned some of his uh, strategy calls, but man, couldn't hold this car and this driver back. Regan. Oh, Kyle Larson getting all the equipment off. Kyle. You've always been a good qualifier at Sonoma. Now you're a good racer. You get the uh, you get the win today, second in a row in dominating fashion. Was it easy as you made it look? Uh, it was not easy. Any any road course isn't easy. Just trying to keep it on track is tough. But uh, especially when you got two of the best behind you on the last restart chase, uh, I felt like I did a good job the one before uh, and stretched out a little bit and then. Didn't want to give him another try at it, but uh, he, he kept the pressure on. Uh, Martin was strong, too, but uh, what a car. Uh, HendrickCars.com, Chevy. Thank you, Mr. H. Uh, this is unbelievable. I, I thought I would be okay today, um, but I just didn't know how I would race. I don't think any of us really do with no practice, but uh, our car was really good there, and uh, can't say enough about it. I, I'd say you were more than okay today in front of your hometown fans, too. What does that mean to you? Yeah, it means a lot. Uh, Northern California, uh, this will always, always be home to me, uh, even if I live way out on the East Coast now. So uh, thank all you fans for coming out. I know there's a lot of sprint car fans in the, in the stands and around this racetrack. Uh, I've got to see a lot of my friends here today. Um, I got my family here. Uh, Owen and Audrey, they are here, but I'm sure you're watching Grandma's house. So I wish you guys were here. Um, just unbelievable. And, and to get you know back-to-back -back wins in the Cup Series is something I've always dreamt of doing. And uh, to get it done feels great. So. Um, to win last week on Memorial uh, Day weekend, uh, four in a row now, uh, if you count my dirt racing too, and got a big week of racing coming up. So uh, look forward to all that and look forward to just keeping the streak going. Kyle Larson, your winner. Let's join Jamie with the runner up. Chase Elliott brings it home second, his best finish at Sonoma, but what a battle between teammates. Chase, where was he just better than you today? Yeah, I wish I, I wish I knew I would have, uh, you know, tried to give him a little better run. But congrats to Kyle and, and Cliff and everybody on the five team. They've been doing an amazing job. So uh, really proud of our Napa group, though. I felt like we were uh, a lot better there at the end than we were at the beginning and, and definitely the best I've ever been here. I feel like uh, at Sonoma in, in particular. So um, pleased with that. You know, I wish we could have got another spot, but we'll try again. Thank you. Four straight one two finishes for Rick Hendrick and Hendrick Motorsports. Martin Truex comes home third. We'll hear from him in a moment as Kyle Larson celebrates in Sonoma and so do his fans.
Well, the playoff picture has become somewhat clearer. The drivers in yellow have victories, led by Larson and Truex with three apiece. I don't think we'll get to 16 different winners, so the regular season champion gets into the playoff, winner or not, and they'll fill down to 16th based on point standings. Chris Busher right now holding on to the bubble spot. Jamie? Martin Truex Jr. brings it home third today. Good news is it's your best finish in a month since Darlington, but the bad news is you didn't get the win. Where were they just a little bit stronger than you today? Just a little bit everywhere. I felt like, you know, um, right-handers, I, I couldn't quite lean on the left rear like I needed to, and I didn't quite have to drive off, but more, more so than that, I didn't have the short run speed. You know, I think uh, the really long runs was our really our only chance there, and um, you know, with all those cautions at the end, just they killed our any chance we had. So, proud of the guys, the best pro Toyota, uh, JGR, TRD, everybody that makes this possible, and um, just not quite good enough. You know, the Hendrick cars are really strong right now. They're really fast, um, making a lot of grip, making our job tough. But you know, like I said, uh, we definitely needed long runs at the end, not all those cautions. Thanks, Martin. Thanks, Jamie. Well, how do you stop Kyle Larson? Can anybody stop Kyle Larson? This kid just keeps on winning. Yeah, you know, we saw he was dominating races earlier in the season, but wasn't putting the victories along with it. We saw Martin Truex Jr. was getting the victories. Now it's starting to become clear, Clint, that they can close it out. And now they're starting to become the clear favorite for this championship. And I look at our top five today. I think it's very possible our top four for going to Phoenix could come out of that five. But look at the wave of the season. That's what I love about this sport. First of all, it was the Gibbs cars. It was that 11 car that was dominating. He wasn't knocking it in in a victory lane, but he was week in, week out, consistent, up front. Everybody's chasing him. Now it's the Hendrick camp. The one that I'm looking for are the Ford boys. they got to show up. Penske, Stuart Haas Racing, they've got work to do, but there's still a lot of racing left. Right, a lot to go before we get to the playoffs. But, boy, right now, Rick Hendrick and his drivers, they are in the driver's seat of the NASCAR Cup Series. So we're off for the all-star break. We're off to Texas Motor Speedway uh, next Sunday. Race day, the all-star open, race day again, and then the all-star race. And for all the news about your sport and more interviews from today, make sure you check out NASCAR Race Hub nightly on FS1. I'm told that at our Friday night dinner, Kyle Larson promised the winner's trophy to Guy Fieri. Wonder when Huge and mistake. where <laughs> and if that will show up. Congratulations, Kyle Larson. Great show in Sonoma.